Episode 125, Kangaroo Court. Introducing Joseph Cobb on the BTS Creative Academy podcast, Uncut. With me, your host, Martin Colton. So welcome. Thank you Joe, very much. Joseph. Uh, officially Joseph. Joseph. Uh, Joe to, uh, yeah, to everyone, basically. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So Joseph, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very, very much. Very nice to have you here. Um, you're a writer. I am. Director. Yep. Producer. Yep. Theatre and film. Yeah. Recently, theatre. I've sort of, my background's film. But, right. um, but yeah, theatre's a new flurry for me. Okay. Uh, well, weirdly, I used to, um... I used to work at the Broxbourne Civic Hall, mm-hmm. or the Spotlight. Now, yes, that was yeah. like my uh, one of my first jobs out of like school. Right. Okay. Um, and I worked behind the bar, mm-hmm. and then I didn't really like it, and uh, I got in touch with like the the tech manager there, and was like, "Can I come and work on stage?" Uh, so I was a bit of a stage hand, sort of stage assistant there. But that's as far as it went. I didn't really want to write for theatre or sort of direct theatre it was just it looked more fun mm-hmm. I got to hit stuff with a hammer and, you <laughs> know, yeah, stuff yeah. Um, but yeah I wanted to do film and that was just kind of like something that was local film was your film was, film your was in, my first life. film was your interest your main interest but before we start I've got this little tradition yep uh, I do this little clap at the beginning I, I've seen the clap you've seen the you've clap seen have the clap. you yeah so I don't like to miss it yeah so basically we go three two one clap and that's yep. the official beginning of the podcast let's do it mate so three two one nice it wasn't too bad actually was it so there we go <laughs> we're in we're officially started so uh so yeah so I, I've been looking at your your company yep kangaroo kangaroo court court yes. what an interesting <laughs> name yeah I I know I thought it was interesting because it was quite mm-hmm. fun and obviously the sort of the literal definition of a kangaroo court, but it was supposed to be something playful, but people love to pick it apart. Okay. Um, sort of like, why so kangaroo why? court? Why? Um, that was instantly, as soon as I looked at that name, I was like, that's interesting. There's got to be a reason for that. Do you know, the like, honest reason mm-hmm. um, is that we were looking for names for a while. So uh, me and um, my friend, business partner now, a um, guy called Matt Anderson, mm-hmm. he, um, he and I were sort of taking the show on the road and... Um, we had the name, the, the play is called Shotgunned. And we was like, okay, like, Shotgunned Theatre. And we was like, I'm pretty sure there's Shotgun Theatre. And it's mm-hmm. like, it might even be a term in itself. But yeah. nothing was really working. And I listened to um, Virgin Radio, like, Breakfast, because mm-hmm. I'm secretly, like, a 50-year-old man and love Breakfast <laughs> yeah. Radio. Um, and Chris Evans and that were talking at the time about, uh, like, the COVID inquiry. And they just said something about Boris Johnson saying his inquiry was like a kangaroo court. And you know, like it's like, and it, it just stuck. It yeah, just, a like, light bulb went yeah, off. Yeah, it light was bulb like it was a real light bulb moment where it was like, oh, kangaroo court, that's cool. And mm. then I just messaged Matt, and I was like, what about kangaroo court? Um, and he was kind of like, why? And I was like, I, I'll tell you later. But what do you, you think? Don't, you don't always need a reason to be inspired by something, do you? I don't think so. You don't no. always have to have. I, yeah, I think people. A lot of people expect a grand story that you was like, you know, the top of the Himalayas and you saw something in the clouds. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes it's, just, sometimes it's just Virgin Breakfast Radio. And you pick, and you and pick you, up yeah. on something. But I liked the name and instantly thought of a kangaroo. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of, it felt soft and it felt playful. And yeah. that was kind of what we was and going it grabbed for. You at, and it grabbed you at that moment. Yeah. And I mean, everyone's job as in like friends and family is to mm-hmm. tell you they like the name. But usually people are like, that's cool. That's interesting. No yeah. one's ever gone like, ooh. ooh. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, no, it works. It, my, see, my business name, that I, so I have a business that, that I do other things underneath underneath that umbrella, yeah, yeah, yeah. is called Words and Ideas. Yeah. And nice. sometimes people like go to me like, what? Yeah. Like, that means nothing. But I got that in a very similar way to how you got oh, yours. I was looking for a, for a business name. Yeah. And I was playing with all these different things. And then I was um, watching a film. Dead Poet Society, nice. Robin yeah. Williams. And he just said this phrase in it, words and ideas can change the world. And it stuck. And it was just like, words and ideas. Yeah. Like that's literally, it kind of covers everything. That's cool. That well, I was going to say, it, it, I'm guessing it does what it says on the tin as well. Basically, it's yeah. All it's, words, it, it's all ideas. It's all words, yeah. it's all ideas. So why not, yeah, why yeah. not words and ideas? And no one else was using that when I looked it up. Yeah, nice. So I was thing. like, yeah. there you go, words and ideas. It was that or, oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, it, yeah, it, uh, inspiration can come from from absolutely anywhere, can't yeah, it? Yeah, I think, <clears throat> not saying I'm old, but any, 
by any means, but like the older you get as well, you sort of get a bit more loose with your inspiration, don't you? you yes, sort of yeah. Don't sort of go on these grand walks and think that yeah. it's going to come to me. You kind of be like, I can have a shower and think of my next idea. That's, yeah. that's usually where And that's where the is. best yeah. ideas actually come to me is in the shower. Yeah. Or a walk when you're, not yeah. try- when you're not trying to force it. When I lived at home, it was a bath. <clears throat> but uh, water's too expensive now. I yeah. <laughs> on my own. <laughs> I was like, no more baths. That's mum and dad's money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But having that moment where you're just where you're just free. Yeah. Where you just where you don't yeah. have to force I think the force. Um, I don't know about you as well, mate. Like it's sort of Yeah, maybe forced what you say. It's like mm. it's not forced. It's just that moment where you start singing in the shower because your mind's elsewhere and then you just think of something rather yeah. than like got rather than I've got to, I've got, I've got to do a list of thirty different names. Yeah. And then one of them has got to be the perfect name. Yeah. It, it reminds me of that that phrase like I think Shakespeare said i think i'm probably wrong i'm gonna say this now what's in a name yeah i won't correct you my shakespeare yeah. knowledge is not yeah. what what but I'll what is in a, what is in a name you know yeah. you can you can put maybe you can put too much emphasis on it yeah that it has to define everything yeah i think perfect. there's something in that i think mm. also as well is like what we said right at the beginning where it's like people it just expect there to be a story behind it and it's yes. and that's kind of cool because mm-hmm. when you're in something creative you know, if I was selling flowers, not that, you know, that can be creative in itself, yeah, but yeah. it's not in the creative industry. So like the name would kind of mean the name would be like, oh, like mm-hmm. green fingers or something. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you attach it to writing words and ideas, people are like, oh, OK, why? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. You don't always have to come up with a grand uh, explanation. But no, no, just... I guess I guess you're right. Sometimes like if you're a, if you're a florist or something or a gardener, you have to do have a name that. That, that sells yeah. your product don't you but for yeah. what we're doing it doesn't necessarily have to be no and i think selling yeah the product. it needs to be something like like kangaroo court that isn't it's a sort of looping back to the beginning where it was like shotgun theater it's like well the next project we want to do mm-hmm. not that it'll hinder it if it's called shotgun theater but people will be like wasn't the name of your first show yes you know, yeah. rather than sort of yeah everything can be under that name it, yeah. under that umbrella and it's like okay yeah yeah, so kind of then making the production company just about that one, yeah, one thing, isn't it? Then absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so where did this? Where did the, you, you? We we almost went right into it at the beginning. Yeah. Where did this kind of all start for you then? Having you know, have you got a production company now? You're taking shows out on tour. Yeah. Where did that all kind of start for you? Um, was it re- was it that being at that theatre working behind the bar? <sighs> No, <laughs> not in, yeah. It it wasn't. It was like I I I really enjoyed my time there. To be honest, when I moved to the tech side, it was good mm-hmm. fun. But um, it sort of went back to school, and I was the kid that um, wanted to do everything. I really wasn't like thirteen years old. I'm gonna do theatre. I'm gonna do film. It was like my mum will often bring it up. She's like, remember when you wanted to be a doctor? And then you was like, cut yourself. And you were like, <laughs> <"Ugh."> and, like <laughs> um, and then it's like, oh, I, I want to be an architect. It really was everything, like bouncing mm-hmm. around. Um, and I saw, I used to say it's my favourite film. It's, it, it's really not now. Not I don't like it, but mm-hmm. um, it was for a valid reason. It was Anchorman. And I saw Anchorman and yeah. it really made me, like, it made a lot of people laugh. It mm-hmm. really made me yeah, laugh. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. At the yeah. time. I, haven't, I haven't watched it. I've it, not watched it in so it, long. It may have aged a bit poorly. I don't know. Do you know what? Weirdly, when I that, think when did that come out? Early 2000s? Like 2004, 2005 yeah, so yeah. maybe? Even, yeah, around mm-hmm. that time. But I loved it. And mm-hmm. I think I was, I must have been about 15, 16 when I saw it. Yeah. Um, and I just was like, this is great. Like, it's making me laugh. Mm-hmm. I was watching it with my family and it was making them laugh. And... It wasn't the most film filmy film. It wasn't no, no, like no. it's not like sh- people go, oh, the camera and the thing. But it was just whatever it was. But it worked. had an it had an effect. Yeah, yeah, and it had a purpose. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, look at what it's doing to everyone. It's making them laugh. It's me. And I was like, I could do that. Um, mm-hmm. And pretty much from that moment, I was like, I want to, I want to write. It wasn't like I want to okay. write this, but it was like I want to write, and that's a film I've seen. So mm-hmm. I want to write film. Yeah, which kind of messed up my a-levels because i took <laughs> right. i took bad a-levels for me <laughs> yeah um, i didn't do i didn't do english i didn't do drama i did i did i did business ict and art okay and didn't didn't click with any of them mm-hmm. i was quite arty so i quite enjoyed art but it just sort of wasn't what i thought it was going to be mm-hmm. um so i kind of messed up my a-levels a little bit but where there was a chance to get involved with other people's I, I did, so like my friends were doing media or drama, 
Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I remember feeling silly for not choosing them, but like getting involved and for media, people had to do like a short film or an advert and I'd be yeah. like, oh, can I get involved? And same as like a production for the drama, people would be like, oh, can I sort of help? And I just, I just loved it and would try and write whenever I could and, and all that. So when you say you messed it up, do you feel like you, you mean like you took the wrong subjects for what you're doing now? Yeah, and and I don't, I don't really think it was a big bad decision. I mm-hmm. never sort of. It's not that thing that's like, you know, in the middle of the night you think, oh my god, why did I do ICT? Really, I haven't thought of it much at all. But just strange for what I've done since then to think how much I just sort of swerved it at yes, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and some but could you have been a theatre producer without some of that knowledge of business and? Uh, God, that's a good question. Could, would you have honest. just been a Would you have just been a writer? If you maybe there's had, something yeah. in that. Maybe there's something mm. in that. Yeah, it, as that's it's not. A, it's a good question because I've never thought of it no. like that to mm. be honest. And in all honesty, that part of school sixth form, I really found it's cliche, but I found myself mm-hmm. and like sort of. Yeah, it was it was cool time because it's like you go from being like um, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. It's all a bit strange, and then yeah. everything gets a bit smaller. Your your closest friends form, and mm-hmm. you can be a bit more of yourself. And like I say, I dipped in and out of those sort of projects, but um, that wasn't to do with my studies. But yeah, maybe maybe I found something in my own studies there that helps me now. Yeah, sure. Um, but I was just adamant then after whatever it was, two years of sixth form, that I was going to go and do film and mm-hmm. I I applied to university it wasn't my grades were awful um really like yeah. <laughs> really, really bad but I always think with doing it is the important thing like, yeah ne- necessary not my, my son's about to go <coughs> off to university yeah and he's really worried about how well he's going to do and I keep saying to him it's about doing it the experience yeah it's about it's not necessarily about there's coming so, away I think there's so much grade. more to it than just Mm-hmm. I don't know like people have strong opinions on like the educational system and stuff and don't like don't they it's like yeah, yeah, it should course. be reformed it should be changed mm-hmm. and I'm I never feel that strongly about it but I just think of when I was there and it just didn't work for me no so I think there's an argument in that it's sort of you know just sitting what there wasn't doing working it. for you as as a creative as a I think in, in all honesty mm-hmm. mate you've hit the nail on the head as I get older and I think back to those times and Particularly in in ICT, it's a really vivid memory. I I, I remember we all sort of did like a bit of a mock test and Mm -hmm. everyone messed up. And the teacher was obviously worried that no one was going to pass because it looks bad on her. So she prepped us for the real thing. And it was just like, I will write this, follow me. And it was like an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is crazy. This is just like... Who is this working for? This is repetition. This Mm -hmm. is just memory. This is everything that I'm not yeah. and um and you're a, a rebellious 17 18 year old so you go like eh, I'm not doing that so, yeah, which yeah. is what I did and mm-hmm. maybe now I would be different maybe I wouldn't I don't know but yeah. um but yeah if I it's just, not the way your brain works I think that's it it's you know, like it, yeah that that system is designed for the masses which kind of has to be but mm-hmm. but what about the what about the, yeah. the kids that's slightly different yeah absolutely yeah absolutely sort of and no one really um no one really talks to you about that, you know, like there are like school counsellors and stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, but not really sort of like, okay, like, do you think you've made the right decision? Like, what do you actually really want to do? It's sort of, yeah, it's it's carved out for ease, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it it's a system that's just been going so long. So long. Like, yeah, year yeah, after yeah. year, it kind of continues yeah. on, the, on the same, but we're into this education system, like just over a hundred years yeah. into it now. And the world has changed. Yeah, the world looks completely different. People are completely different. Yeah, so and maybe it's just yeah, it's like I say, it's it's different. Everyone's different, mm-hmm. and I know that makes it harder. But yeah, I was just sort of even then, like I say, I was just finding more out about myself. Yes, yeah. I was like, I guess oh, it's I'm a hard gonna... time as well to be a to be a human because because oh, you because yeah. because we change, don't we? At yeah, that yeah. Age. And I like, got a I car, th- mate, and I didn't want to be. I wanted to be anywhere other than school. Yeah. I was like, I want to be driving here, mm-hmm. there, everywhere. I'd sooner be at you know, Krispy Kremes at three in the morning and yeah, yeah. doing my homework or whatever it was. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, if you can navigate through that time, I think you can kind of navigate through. Yeah, I think it's hard, for, I think it's hard yeah. for most to navigate through it, isn't it? Yeah. Through that, that self-discovery and, and at the same time having to conform to all the, the yeah. rules of society and peer pressures as well. Yeah. 
when other and like people you said about your son like you mm-hmm. sort of just most people just go to university yes and i was never convinced that i wanted to go to university mm-hmm. um at all and sort of everyone around you is and even so when you're, my son's in that position he's not 100 percent. oh really and he's got it's got to be like you know he's going this yeah. year if he's going and he's got a based on his grades he's got a placement nice but he's still not yeah, hundred percent sure that that's the right thing for him. It's I so having it being, been. What would yeah. you kind of? What would you say to someone like that? Um, I would say, I'd pick your moment. Really pick your moment because mm-hmm. it's such a. It can be beneficial, and it really can, for the obvious reasons of getting a degree, getting mm-hmm. a job, depending on what you're doing, but also find it more of an elevation of finding yourself around like-minded people and it's that living away from home and whatever but yeah. um like i said i didn't i didn't do it at that age because it just wasn't for me mm-hmm. um sort of skipping forward in my story but i went as a mature student older and oh, that okay. was my moment i picked that's what i picked i picked my moment where it was like okay now i think i want so to did do you it. T- did you take a year, year i or took two? about 10 years mate you took 10 years yeah wow um okay. and went back as a a bearded, a bearded <laughs> student, because I wanted to learn what I wanted to learn. Yes. Um, rather than just go in and follow in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it probably sounds a bit sort of like high. I don't mean that as a no, following no, the crowd, but you know, just it helped because I had stuff that I thought was cool mm-hmm. that I did instead. <clears throat> Excuse me. I I went and um, I managed to get a a work experience at the BBC. So it doesn't. So sorry. So it's just going back to that, like that ten year break and picking your moment. Yeah. Literally, then there doesn't have to be necessarily you continue on the school. No education system. You you can come away from it and you can find a place to to learn later on. Yeah, yeah. I think it's what we were saying about like everything being quite individual, but Mm -hmm. like the system built for the masses. I think if you can, you know, I would say don't probably do the city thing that I did and mess up my grades Mm -hmm. but like I don't think you need to follow that particular system that blueprint because Mm -hmm. if it doesn't work for you it's only going to be wasteful and I've got friends that did it that go I probably should have waited three years I should have waited four years and then in that 10 years I don't know and be Mm -hmm. like am I happy do I need this yes no kind of like those sort of flow charts where it splits off and you kind of go okay yeah it's going to give me something rather than uh, they're telling me I should go, but nah. I, I really think that you don't need to. No. Depending on what you want to do. If you're is dead there, set, is, you want to be a lawyer. Is there a, is there a problem with finances? Does it is it harder being a mature student based on finances? It was tough. Mm-hmm. That was really tough because I worked for 10 years. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden you're coming away from, yeah, from it was that a, steady income that you might have had. And it was a weird time mm-hmm. because it was... Um, I, I went in 2020, so right. it was height of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, that influenced my decision massively. Um, but my work had kind of dried up because of that. So it was a not an easy decision, but I decided to go and study because um, I never did. And I was like, it'd be cool to get a degree, cool to actually learn about... Um, I went and did English and writing, like mm-hmm. English creative writing. So it was something I was... Uh, then I say when I was choosing my A levels, I didn't choose English or no, anything you didn't choose. because I don't know why. But mm-hmm. then ten years later, I was like, well, if I'm going to go, I'm going to do English and creative writing because I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, and then that was the good decision. Probably if I went at eighteen, I know me, I would have fluffed that as well. I would have been like, nah, this is it, too much fun. Like I'm not e- gonna even do if that. it was the right subject at that time. Oh, hundred percent. It would have still yeah. the, the other elements in life yeah, and, the, yeah, yeah. and the way that we are when we're younger wouldn't have worked for you. No, not at all. Right. Not at all. I um, I would have had too much fun and sort of not done mm-hmm. the uni for what it was there for. Probably would have, yeah, been that guy that racked up the debt and mm-hmm. come out and been like, oh, damn, why did I go? <laughs> sort yeah. Of, yeah. Um, but yeah, going 10 years later, just sort of, I enjoyed it. Like I, yeah. I did, I, I wanted to learn. Like I got, a, I got, I got first, I got my, my best mark I could because I cared about it and mm-hmm. I took so much from it that I actually wanted to take rather than just, like I said, back to school, following the blueprint and being like, oh, she she wants me to write that, I'll do that, which that comes with age, right? You yeah, sort of, yeah, bit age, experience, time, yeah, all of that. So was there something that was like inspiring you to, to go back 
to education? Was there something driving you in that direction or giving you the freedom to do that? Because as we get older, mm. it's harder to yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to look for education and to, to do things for ourselves. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it there was myriad reasons why I went. And like mm -hmm. I say, COVID was a massive thing. And I just, I remember so when I didn't go to uni and I, I, I got a work experience and I ended up being a runner on film sets and right. um, sort of worked up there mm -hmm. and got to a, a, a level, you know, before I went back to uni, before it all went mm -hmm. with the COVID stuff. But I said to my mum and dad, because they're the coolest people on the planet. They're like the most supportive people. If you want to do that, nice. like we've got your back sort mm -hmm. of thing, as long as you know what you're doing um, mm -hmm. and got a plan. But I remember saying to them, if I if I don't get to where I want to be by the time I'm 30, I don't know why, I just picked 30. Yeah. Um, I'll go back to uni. Mm -hmm. I remember said it to him, and it was almost like a, um, I don't know, it was almost like a buffer for them being like, like, not that they care, but you know, like <laughs> yeah, no, there is some. Well, I think when you're younger, you think thirty is such an old age, oh, don't you? Yeah. You think, <laughs> oh mate, honestly. you think like I remember when I was younger, I used to think if if by thirty I haven't made it as an actor, I'm going to join the police force <laughs> yeah. and like have yeah. a, have a, like a, a full on pr career, proper proper job, yeah, yeah, and yeah. like put it all aside if I haven't done it by thirty, and then yeah. you get you get to that age and you're like, actually, this is no There's age at all. So much more to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I I picked the same. I picked mm. thirty, and I was like. I'll, I will go back to uni and I'll, you know, I'll do the education thing yeah. and I'll get my degree and I'll throw the hat up in the air and I'll skip down to, <laughs> you know, whatever job takes me. But yeah. so there was an element of that, but just in the weirdest way, um, me and my girlfriend, we were supposed to be working um, in Italy. We got a job in Italy okay. uh, for that year. Mm -hmm. Which is so funny, mate, because um, <laughs> we obviously like China and that is where it started. And then, it, and then Italy, Italy was like the worst. Yeah, I remember yeah. Italy was like the first one that it started to look like if they've got a problem in Italy. Yeah. Like Italy's got one of the best, best healthcare systems in yeah. the world, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was collapsing. And it was like, if Italy's struggling, yeah. then when it's it comes coming. here, yeah. it's going to be bad. Yeah. So we, um, we, a bit of a like, pretext to that mm -hmm. we'd sort of done our English uh, teaching English as a foreign language um, not degree but like uh, qualification because mm -hmm. um, we did it sort of in other places and did it sort of in South America briefly and then I was like oh like I'm gonna live in Italy we applied to this job got it it was on the Amalfi Coast Lovely. it was for a year mm -hmm. it was paid it was like fantastic like pack our bags we're going to the Amalfi Coast at least mm -hmm. for a year and then obviously that all happened and it was tragic, but there's something funny in it now because the head of the school was emailing us being like, um, I think we was emailing her being like, is everything okay? Like obviously in the news, we're sort of hearing things. And she was going like, oh, don't worry. It's all in the North. Um, the South is absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a couple weeks later or whatever it was. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh, like, yeah, no, we're gonna have to close up shop for a bit, but don't worry in September, the job's still there for you. And then it just went quiet for ages. And then we chased her. I think her name was Sheila. Mm. And we was like, hi, Sheila. Like, what's what's going on? And uh, she's just like, I've gone back to Canada. I had to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I was like, oh, the job's gone. Oh, yeah. the Amalfi Coast dream is gone. Um, Things happen for a reason, though, don't they? Yeah, I think so, mate. Because then it was like, throw the dart at the map. Mm -hmm. Where can we go? Because I had my heart set on the beach. Right. Um, and what do I do? I'd sort of planned to to go there so I'd sort of work had dried up I didn't chase any more I wasn't looking for alternatives because that was my alternative mm -hmm. how did you feel at that time uh I mean everyone felt a bit crazy didn't they like yeah, I yeah. sort of yeah I, th I it was weird because that had caved for me and it was going to be a massive change in my life mm -hmm. but the massive change was actually happening to the entire world so you couldn't yeah. couldn't get hung up on it that's mm -hmm. the thing it was like you know people some people plans did. fall fell through mm -hmm. and bigger plans and it was all you know it was a nice thing but it wasn't the worst thing in the world and mm -hmm. um like my, my dad was my dad was unwell at the time really really poorly um mm -hmm. so i would kind of like was looking after him at home um and it was locked down and it was nasty and it was weird and strange but i remember sort of thinking this can't go on as in mm -hmm. like literally like you know this will have to end some time but also me this can't go on I, mm -hmm. 
I planned to be away. I planned to live with my girlfriend. Finally, we'd sort of not, <clears throat> we were living at home um, mm -hmm. separately and whatnot. And that's when the kind of like callback being like, oh, a university, 30s coming up, like maybe. So it was very much like, where's a nice part of the UK? Cornwall, Falmouth, all right, they've got a university. Mm -hmm. Bit of research. Actually, their creative um, section's really good. Like, they're really well known for, like, the creative bit. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll apply. And uh, that was all quite funny because I just applied sort of as an adult, you know, like mm -hmm. a proper adult, like a 30 or then a 29-year-old man. Yeah, which is... So I just phoned him. You, like, didn't do the sort of... the child thing now of being like oh what do I do I don't want to speak to him on the phone it was just like hello just is that Falmouth yeah. Uni like mm -hmm. I'm Joe like sort of thing um, and they just put me on to the course leader for the English uh, or the communications bit which comes under English comes under that mm -hmm. and um, yeah without exaggeration mate I think w within two days they called me back and um, Jennifer was the, the, the lady and she was just like w uh you know, so this is this, this is that. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you. It'd be great. So we're offering you a place. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. This is happening. I was like, this is cool. Like, mm -hmm. fantastic sort of thing. Um, I'll be there. See you in September. Mm -hmm. uh, phone my girlfriend, phone Mills, Camilla, and uh, was like, oh, Mills, I think, I think we're moving to Cornwall. Um, mm -hmm. And she is as cool as a cucumber so she's like sweet that suits me like um and then nice. yeah i mean a, a month later we were living down in falmouth and i was starting this university so life can a, literally change just yeah, like that it was you... so quick it was mm -hmm. it yeah blink and you missed what happened it was like mm -hmm. we were in hertfordshire one month the next month we was in a flat in falmouth and it was like where are we all right but let's go um but it was it was cool it was weird because of you know everything was strange and mm -hmm. going into the town and everything was closed and you couldn't really meet people but there was moments where I thought what have I done like oh like where as soon as this lifts like everyone's going to be going back to work properly and my work's going to pick up and mm -hmm. I've taken on student debt <laughs> I'll be like oh, what an idiot who gets to 29 and takes on student debt but and you yeah and you got to, you got to afford to just genuinely live yeah down and there. just yeah like I say just yeah. live and it was mm -hmm. you couldn't get a I couldn't get a job down there because there was no jobs going because everything was closed and it was, I think it was scary. Like you were saying, how did I feel at the time with, mm -hmm. earlier on? You sort of, I don't always stop because people don't do that. You don't no, always you stop don't. to think no. about actually how you feel. Mm -hmm. You just do it and then, I don't know, maybe the, the, then the thoughts come, the thoughts at, come at like or... 12 midnight when you're trying mm -hmm. to go to bed and then you're like, oh. and then the next day you're just, well, I've got to do it. So straight back in. But yeah. I, um, yeah, long story short, I'm still there. So I still live down in Cornwall. Oh, do you? Yeah, still live in Falmouth. Right, okay. Yeah, still live. I'm I'm staying with my parents. You've just come to visit your parents at the moment. Well, I've come to, we did the show. We did the, the yes. play. So play is the that, tour finished for this? No, no, no. It's very much just sort of at the at the beginning. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah, we, um, we did three nights in London, the weekend just gone. Nice. So, um, yeah, we came down, we did those. And um, so that part of the tour's finished, the next part. Um, it's kind of I don't know it's a bit up in the air at the moment it's either going to be in Cornwall or it's going to be um, back in London before we go to Fringe we're mm -hmm. going to Fringe for the month yes, yeah. in August but um, yeah no I still I still live in uh, I still live in Falmouth so you found is that going to be your place now do you think I don't know mate to be honest I used to, I, I really did think that mm -hmm. when everything lifted and the sun came out and I was at the beach yeah. and I was like oh who would ever live anywhere else like mm. really like and it's beautiful but oh it is beautiful like i used to grow up we went there every yeah, year yeah. when i was a child down there camping and yeah, yeah the countryside down in cornwall and it's just it's, it's just lovely isn't it yeah it is man and, and yeah. especially like and the way though, everyone's everyone seems a little bit calmer oh so know, much more calm. it, but that's the, a, that can the, be the frustrating the thing. frustrating yeah. yeah especially if you've come from a yeah. bit more fast it, takes, it life. took a long time mm -hmm. i say it took a long time it's taking a long time to really sort of still understand it because yeah. that sense of urgency in a very much you know like little house on the prairie <laughs> way doesn't exist no, or no. It, it's very rare so you kind of go like come on let's get this over the line yes yeah. um and people are like no come on let's go to the beach you know yeah. let's do this which is which can be nice for a little holiday it's or idyllic. nice nice to uh, yeah. retire which is yeah. where a lot of people go to yeah retire. and i'm you know i'm in the <laughs> middle of the, you know i'm in the in the sort of mm -hmm. 
we're just trying to get ourselves off the ground. I'm trying to get myself off the ground mm-hmm. and a little bit cheaper down there, is it? To live oh, down I wish. Is I wish it not? It was, mate. No, because no. it's because it's, because it's, it's so tor- scenic it's, and it's tourist town and, right. and like so it's it's a holiday place, you know. Yeah, I, and I'll, I won't really complain because it's beautiful and I live in a mm-hmm. I live in a holiday place. Like right, it's very okay. I don't know if lucky is the word because you, mm-hmm. you make it happen. So you make your own luck, really, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of like, I wouldn't complain and be like, Jesus Christ, like still paying £4 for a coffee. Mm. But you are. <laughs> it's yeah. just sort of, but if I was living back with mum and dad and working in London like I used to, it would be the same. But, you know, I can, mm-hmm. I can put that on the back burner most of the time and be like, but look, there's the sea. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of do you think I'll stay, I'm, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. About a year ago, if you asked me, I'd be like, yeah, 100%. Do you think what happens with your producing, your writing, your directing a theatre, film, I think do you s- think that might lead where, yeah. where you go next? Yeah, and, you know, in a in just a nice, compassionate way, it's not all mm-hmm. about me. It has to align course, with my yeah. girlfriend. Like, we live together. She's, mm-hmm. again, like I say, she's pretty cool, and she sort of followed me down there. If I, I'm sure if I said... You know, I've got to go here unless it was mm-hmm. somewhere atrocious. I don't know if, she, if <laughs> I don't know if it was like I get a job in the favelas in Rio or something. She what does like, she oh, do? What does she do? So she works for um, she works for a company called it's really weird. It's called Forty Four Moles. They're a German okay. company, <laughs> um, but they do like uh, they're a sustainability company, mm-hmm. and they've got the it sounds it sounds so cool because mm-hmm. they, the company work with lasers, right, um, okay. which already and, and moles, <laughs> no moles, no, no moles. moles. Oh, no. I was imagining these little moles with lasers. Yeah, on <laughs> it looks like it, doesn't it? You're like yeah. sort of Austin Powers shot yeah. with lasers. Um, but no, it's uh, they use lasers to track forests for like. Um, carbon this is the word that i've learned still okay. i can't tell you exactly what it means but it's like sequestration or something Ooh. like that yeah i'll okay. probably get told off for <laughs> saying that wrong but it's just you know to track how much carbon these trees can remove mm-hmm. um but she's a partnerships manager so she sort of gets companies to work with them right okay. you know, i'd be like oh i don't know um the first company that comes to my head was amazon because mm-hmm. it's the biggest company but um you'd be like oh we're would you like to partner with 44 moles i know you're everyone needs to do their sustainability thing mm-hmm. um plant trees here we can tell you how much you can offset you can tell you how much you can do this that and the other so but she's good at it. she's always done that that's her yeah. completely different to me which i think is healthy mm-hmm. like she loves film she loves theater she loves everything that i do but she doesn't want to do it no which i think is nice because we have different conversations have, yeah. at the dinner table for one but also there's no competition <laughs> there's yeah. no like it can, it can be yeah it can i don't yeah. know a lot of people and myself included yeah having you know my my wife she's uh she's into acting and i'm yeah. into acting and it's like well who's going to do the play next who's yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. who's gonna do the next one or do you know and, it's hard and i imagine to, that's harder to navigate yes than, yeah well i mean you do because mm-hmm. you just do if you care about someone but mm-hmm. i always thought like oh yeah same as if you owned a small business together and you just worked all day and then come home and then you knew everything about that person's day mm-hmm. it'd be like it could quickly turn quite dry up I yeah guess. i think yeah. so yeah it's a horrible time dry yeah. up for like <laughs> you know like a marriage but, uh, or yeah relationship, I, get, I, get, I guess you've got a, there's got to be some in, outside interest in life hasn't there yeah to, to keep it moving forward and yeah to be able to it, i guess it helps give you some perspective yeah as well 100%, so that 100%. you can look at things in a different way because mm-hmm. you can get very kind of caught up in whatever industry that you're in especially in like the creative stuff you yeah know, like some things i'll come home and say mm-hmm. and I, you see the smirk on her face and, and she'll be like what what are you talking about and it'll mm-hmm. be something about like ah, I, I, I can't think of it but like something silly about mm-hmm. the creative industry talking about a, a prop or or something yeah, yeah. that's that's broken and she's like are you, do you even hear what you're <laughs> talking about you know yeah and um, and to be in the creative industries i do think it's a thing of luck as well and a thing that we should you know that we should take a step back sometimes and go how how nice is this yeah compared to other industries oh, mate if you can be involved in it mm-hmm. in any way shape or form i think you're lucky as in like you know there's just yeah. worse things to do and you should I, you need I, to be I worked in a bank for five years. Okay, how was that? The worst time of my <laughs> life. And so I appreciate when I'm doing things like this, I appreciate this all the more now. Yeah. Because I'm not I'm not there. I'm not having that's to do, such a healthy um, perspective, yeah, isn't it? It's I'm just, not having yeah. to do that. So when I have my worst days in the theatre, I compare it to my <laughs> my best yeah. days there and I'm like, well, hold on a second. Like yeah. I'm getting to do the thing I love. 
So it's actually not that bad. I think that's really healthy, mate. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of have to have that. You sort of, everyone has bad days. Like it'd be weird if, Mm -hmm. you know, George Clooney, I'm sure he wakes up sometimes. He's like, oh my God. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't that much, but. um, (laughs) He did the day that I met him. He had a bad day. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. I worked with him a couple of years ago on a film called um, The Boys in the Boat. Oh, the, um, yeah, the rowing, the rowing, the yeah, rowing yeah. one, and I was a. I was did, an, did he direct it? He directed yeah. it. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen it yet. It's recently come out on Amazon Prime. Uh, it took a long time to come out, actually, because they, they made it. They made it years ago. You said, well, they yeah. made it through co- like through the COVID oh, okay. restrictions, and we was all we was all having to stand like two meters apart. Yeah, and then all get in a boat together. And that's weird. Yeah, yeah, it was all just yeah. like like the rules have to on this side of the set. The rules have to be a hundred percent perfect. Yeah. As soon as you cross that line, you can forget the rules and yeah. do your job. And it was all a bit yeah. There was that that side of it, but yeah, he. Um, I was one of the rowers. I was just an extra. Yeah, and it was on the extra call out thing was can you row? Yeah, it didn't say anything about type <laughs> of bow or yeah. have you or what level of rowing can you do? So you're thinking about like, being on? Like, I'm just the thinking about like or something, yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking. Well, I'm thinking I can row in a rowboat, like yeah. okay to gen- yeah. didn't ask what level. So everyone kind of just everyone that was there that day just pressed yes, and <laughs> we got in the boats and no one could row, and the boats are going That's everywhere, so funny, the oars yeah. are dropping in the water. George Clooney's the other side of the river with a megaphone. Was, going, he, was he giving? He some? was. He yeah. was going. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like he was really upset, and he was yeah. upset with all the people around him. And about halfway through the day, he just disappeared. Yeah, he just went. And he'd obviously had enough that it clearly That's wasn't so working. Yeah. No one could row. And then the next day, it was in the Daily Mail. Oh, really? The the paparazzi yeah. were there in the trees, and they'd taken pictures of all yeah. these bad rowers and George Clooney getting upset. Called like George Moni or something. Yeah, no, that's yeah. exactly was it. Was that, that what it was? Was exactly oh, what it was. Maybe I should be a journalist. Um, I don't know. But yeah, like I, I'm sure, I'm sure he comes away from it and goes, look. I'm getting to make movies. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but also you can kind of sim- I I can kind of sympathise with mm-hmm. him if he did that every waking minute of every waking hour of the day. Yeah, and was that off camera and when everything was going hunky dory, you'd be like, oh, he's not great. But he's wanted. He's got a vision of what he wants to see, and and mm-hmm. like I say, you just sort of. Not excusing it, but like well, you can of, see that be like, oh, like come on. Same I as think with like, the creative stuff as well, people forget how much money goes into it, mm-hmm. and the time and the pressure, effort and, and, and effort. energy. And so yeah. you say you've been a, a runner. I've been a, I was so a runner you, for a long time. So you know yeah. what it's like on a film set that things have to get done that are on the call sheet on that day. Yeah. And if they don't get done on that day, they can't happen tomorrow because there's another call sheet yeah, for I tomorrow. Was, I, I was a first AD a couple so, of times, mate. So, so you, I, were, you yeah. was planning all of that. Yeah. So, yeah, so you understand that the pressures of it has to happen on that day. Yeah, there's and no if, give. And, it, and, if, and if someone's employed all these extras that can't row boats, what the hell yeah. are you going to do to fix you go that? To you're going to be frustrated, producer aren't you? or whatever and be like, we need another day. And they're like, yeah. we have a budget for another day. You, mm-hmm. was, there's 20... What are the two hundred extras out there? Yeah, like, that's it, Bilby today. Yeah. So yeah, so you can sympathise where like tensions can get high. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like everything, it's the way you navigate through it, isn't it? You sort of, I don't know, you walk off, you do some yoga, or come back and <laughs> yeah, come, yeah. and then you go right, okay, well I am in charge, yeah. and I need to do this. Yeah. Or con, or, or oh, yeah, contemplate on those times that you weren't doing your thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how how on. long were you on the shoot for? Uh, I did three days. No, where, was it? It, where was it filming? Uh, it was filming down near Twickenham. Okay. Uh, just a just a river, random river yeah, down yeah. there. Um, but yeah, it was all right. I I'll have to see the film to see if you yeah. see the corner I of my head. Much or about it, I'll be honest. I, I know, no. I know it because it, when they were doing well, it was like a the huge press number one best bestseller. The book, it yeah, was, it was massive. But the film seems to have faded faded away. Yes, yeah, so, I mean I don't know much about no. it. Just apart from. I remember seeing him like the one show, I mm-hmm. think maybe with the lead actor um, right. promoting it and then the sort of Graham Norton mm. couch. But in terms of that trip, the film, I, I've not seen it. I've not read. Really, no, I, I couldn't f- tell you I what it's about, the, apart from the Ruin. sort of mid-budget films kind of disappear a little bit now. Like you get the yeah, big, but you get the big budget films, yeah. and so you know, half literally half the budget is thrown into advertising, yeah. and it just completely takes over the space. Yeah, that all the mid-budget films. They'll talk about it for a week and then it'll just... Yeah, well, I've even noticed disappear. that in with genuinely what's in the cinema. You'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to see that. And then if you don't go if that you, first week, some films, they, they're just gone. And you're yeah. like, what? And 
it was there last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it only opened last week. Yeah. So yeah, there's definitely something in that. They sort of like the the big films. They just which they always have, but mm-hmm. now it seems that yeah, you kind of got your um, always the Marvel sort of films or Marvel's Barbies and Star Oppenheimers Wars, yeah. and stuff. And then there's yeah, the I don't know indie films are they're they're almost a law unto themselves because mm-hmm. like you say, they get a bit of a cult following or they word usually, of mouth, word of bit, mouth, or yeah. like if it's naturally if it's a decent script it gets picked up for awards season and mm-hmm. so um i watched the uh, american fiction the other day have you seen that no that's no, really good man that's really yeah. good that was um i think that one that won the oscar for mm-hmm. adapted screenplay i think it was right okay but again i don't i think if it didn't get picked up for the awards season people would be like well, what's american then it's fiction? Still, yeah. yeah yeah then it's disappeared again because like i say i, I, go, oh, I watched it because i knew it had won like the BAFTA and the Oscar and that. Yeah, so the world is that the world of how entertainment is produced and consumed has changed so much, hasn't huge, it? Especially yeah, huge, especially since like especially since COVID. Yeah, COVID was like a reset for so many things, but the the film industry mm. is just flipped, isn't it? Like yeah, the, the, at home streaming is how we're all consuming yeah consuming movies. The last time I went to the cinema was I love the cinema. I love yeah. movies very much like yourself. But the last time I went to the cinema was to see Mission Impossible. Oh, that's which, sad, man. That, yeah. yeah, and I used to go monthly. Yeah. When did Mission Impossible come out? That was October. Might September. Have been before, to be honest, it might yeah. have been a summer blockbuster. Yeah. That was the last that was time. A, oh, that, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a bit of a maybe an anomaly mm-hmm. because I, I do. I mean, like you said, I do love it, and I do. Yeah. I, I go um, quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Try and go once a week. Don't say I definitely do, but I try. That's good. Um, That's... Definitely a couple of times a month. But do you feel when you'd go as well that the cinema is oddly quiet? Depends on the film. Mm-hmm. I mean, the cinema. I can't remember the last time I went to a packed cinema. Last time I went to a. Pa- I mean, the last time I went to a packed cinema was probably Barbie or Oppenheimer. Right. Probably. Mm-hmm. Um, Mission Impossible. I also remember, weirdly, I, I at Christmas I saw Wonka right. in um, Stevenage. Mm-hmm. That was quiet because I was like, we're going to go and see. That it was a big Christmas release. Yeah, a bigger cinema. Um, mm-hmm. As you can imagine, down in Falmouth is a tiny little cinema. So yeah, yeah. if you get four people in there, you're like, oh, it's busy yeah. in here. <laughs> um, but that one, I was like, where is? There's no one here. Like yeah. it was like there was like four of us. Well, that's what I found every yeah. time I've been to the cinema for the last couple of it's years. It's quite saddening because mm. I always picture my film one day being in there and like I think still even if you had someone who's grown up with home streaming mm-hmm. um that wants to be a writer, director, actor, anything to do with film, if you say where do you see it, no one goes, Oh, on uh-huh. everyone's T V. It'd be mm-hmm. like, nah, cinema, I want to be the red carpet. Yeah. Leicester Square Empire and then I want it to be like in the views and Odeons and stuff mm-hmm. because the cinema experience is something special isn't it uh, well the, why I go so much mm-hmm. one I love films but it, it's my it's like catharsis honestly mm-hmm. I just it's that switch off you know when people go to the gym and that's it yeah or for a run or they do something mm-hmm. that one of a few things for me is, is the cinema mm-hmm because it's one you just can't you, be, you can't off. be on your phone for that yeah. for that two hours your phone's away yeah. can't you, put the you, kettle on no can't. you can't put the kettle yeah. on there's distractions are very rare yeah it, you you're in that film on the big screen yeah. in that dark environment and and that's it yeah I, on, you can on a complete, bad day mm. if i go to the cinema i i will come out even if it's a film that i'm not that keen on mm-hmm. i'll come out feeling good and have a lot to say about either a great film or a, mm-hmm. or a bad film and it's yeah, it's, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah. I love it so much, I tried to start my own cinema here for a little while. No, wait, what? Like, literally L- Literally here. here, where we are now. This but would be good. This would be nice. Yeah, that's what I or always comfy thought. Seats comfy seats, yeah. But just people weren't, people weren't comfortable. You can only put on older films. Yeah. You know, it's got to be out of general release. At least minimum is like eight months. Okay. Well, still, um, they're kind of, I mean, they're sort of so like, like with old, old films. Like yeah. Bring in Jurassic Park and things like well, that. Well, that's what I tried to do, yeah. like put up, like oh, I called it Retro Cinema Club. Yeah. And put on films like that's Ghostbusters. Cool idea, all, like, all the films yeah. that I love. So I put on like Ghostbusters, Jurassic yeah. Park, but yeah, it just just so hard to get people to to come I out. I would have come. I would have come. <laughs> I've, I've, my favourite cinema, like, I, cause well, I've, I still got all the kit, so I keep yeah. thinking I'm just going to have a movie night. Maybe here. one day, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got, got the keys. Just, if you like, just put be it on. like, yeah, yeah. We just put a movie on, and that's it. Yeah, I went to see, um, I went to see the Revenant. No, mm. hang on, the Revenant was, but I went to see 
what was it? Basically, it was in, it was in, it was in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Um, the Hate for Late. It was the Hate for Late, the Tarantino right. film. Uh, do you know what? That's the only Quentin Tarantino film I haven't watched. You haven't watched? I no, was going to say the I only just... Quentin Tarantino you don't like. No, no, I haven't watched it, oh. and that's really bad. I'm, I'm, like... I'm a Hate for Late fan. I do like do it. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, not like as in it's not my favourite, but it's mm-hmm. not my favourite Tarantino film, but it, I do like it, because mm-hmm. some people are just like... Nah, like it's not not for me. It was this. Mm. It was that. I I really enjoyed it. I'm a bit of a Tarantino fan. So yeah, I am. I, I yeah. am. I shouldn't call myself that. Yeah. Having missed one of only ten films. No, mate. I do. I. I, I it's on. It's on the list of films to watch. Oh, you got to see it. Yeah. But I saw it in a place called Wanaka in mm-hmm. New Zealand, right. and it was uh, a couple, a um, Kiwi couple that mm-hmm. run an indie cinema, mm. and they did the cool thing of like um, all the seats were different or they had like normal seats and then at the side they would have um it would be like a car what would be like the, the front part of the car from greece okay or <laughs> like or you know like just movie cars yes, and you could yeah. sit in there mm-hmm. um and it was a lovely i mean the town was beautiful it was in mm-hmm. south island new zealand so already it was stunning mm-hmm. but um they had an interval which was cool because hateful eight has an interval right um okay. so they actually had like an intermission and um this this dude come out halfway when they come up and I can't do a great Kiwi accent, but he was like, oh, my wife's made uh, cookies, if anyone would like some. <laughs> That's good. That's right. That's and uh, and uh, we went outside and his wife had made homemade cookies and all of us there being like, oh, it was so cool. Wow. And then we just went back in and watched the other half of Hateful Eight and mm-hmm. just like nudging my girlfriend being like, this, this is my happy place. Yeah. Like, I never want to leave here. Yeah. Um, so I get that wanting to make your own cinema because I, mm-hmm. I, in a heartbeat, if someone gave me, I don't know, if someone gave me a big check I'd be like, what old building can I turn into a cinema? Yeah, like yeah. that would be cool. That yeah. would be cool. I did it. I did it for about nine months. Yeah, that's get, a pretty yeah. good stint. Yeah, yeah. Did it. but it just yeah, just so hard to get. Got a few people in the door. Like yeah. I think Ghostbusters was the biggest. No, a Muppets Christmas Carol. Oh, of course that, it was. That was the big. Was. And I did the yeah. sing along version. Yeah. So, and do you know what? That was like that. Did was it have lovely. the old song that they always get rid of? Now? Well, so what? So what I did? So when you get the rights, the place that you get the rights from, they. Uh, they used to, but they no longer supply you with the material. Okay. So you you pay for the material to be, but but you don't get it, and so you have to seek the material yourself, like the DVD. Yeah. Well, the DVD sing along is no longer available. Okay. So, but I'd started advertising it and started selling tickets for it. Yeah. And the tickets were slowly, slowly but steadily going up. So I edited and sat through the whole film <laughs> did you put, put subtitles, put subtitles on? on the That's whole dedication. film because i wanted i wanted like i could There's see the tickets of dialogue selling. as well because you've got all the background no it was, yeah so right, all yeah. the side but i just did the, the subtitles for the song okay, okay it was still a lot of work it took a week yeah to sit because i was doing other things as well of course so i was I sitting up till like that. That. That's great. <laughs> i put all the subtitles for the songs on and then at the end because yeah. I, I had the version that didn't have the original song i then put that on the end as well yeah because i knew there'd be a couple of people be like you've that would go like it, yeah. you've you've missed out the the original song there's yeah. a cu- there's a couple of hardcore fans that would that would want that so yeah i'm yeah. A, i'm i'm one of those hardcore I, fans I, but, oh, I like, added me that and my brother to the that's like yeah, you know, weirdly that and Jingle All the Way for Christmas films, right? And it's awful. Mm-hmm. Jingle All the Way. Have you seen Jingle? Yeah, all the Way? of course I have. It's awfully, oh, it's, it's so awful, but bad. but brilliant though. I've it, got it, a hoodie that's got Turbo Man. I would on love it. a Turbo. I would love yeah. anyone listening that wants to buy me a Christmas <laughs> present a Turbo <laughs> Man, not, yeah. please. Like yeah. I would, I would, I would ha- have a Turbo Man. Um, you can buy them actually. They an actual Turbo Man. You, yeah, they last Christmas I saw it in the entertainment. I want one as well. Yeah, yeah. you can get Turbo Man. I, um, yeah, I've got a hoodie with, uh, like, it's Turbo Time and then Turbo nice. Man on it. And you know, Is it the Prince of Wales or the Prince Charles Theatre up in Leicester Square? Yes, yeah. They um, do, like, the kooky sort of sing-along stuff or whatever. Yeah, they, they do Muppets Christmas Carol every year. Yeah, but they did a quote-along a quote along jingle all the way, like, about five oh, years right. ago, and I, I went to that. Yeah. And just was with a load of geeky people like me just sort of shouting Arnie lines. At the, have you, have, at you the ever be, have you ever been there to watch, like, an old film? Uh, I've only been there to watch Jingle All the Way, right? Okay. And the Room, you know, the bad. You seen the? They put yeah, that. Don't they put that all on the time. all the time? Yeah, they yeah. And it was with it. Tommy Wiseau and Greg mm-hmm. Sestero. They did a Q and A. Yeah, that's that's a crazy experience. Um, yeah. Seeing that film, um, but yeah, they're the two films I've seen there. 
yeah because yeah. they do like five pound tickets and things like that if i still it? lived here honestly i would be yeah every yeah. time i go into london i think oh do you know what i, sh- I should have gone this evening like i should have yeah. i should have made an effort to go to go they in do there. like dress up um yeah. dress up ghostbusters and things like yeah. that don't they yeah yeah, and again, when I did my cinema here and I did Ghostbusters, I um, I got the local Ghostbusters in. Okay, so the local Ghostbusters. Do you, do you not know that? No. So there's Ghostbusters pretty much in every in every town, like it's like a franchise. It's like <laughs> no a fr- idea. it's like a franchise. Yeah. In fact, I've had on a, on an episode of this, I sat down with one of them and we have a no chat. No way. So it's basically, it's like they're cosplaying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they dress up as Ghostbusters. Okay. Um, and they build all the the proton packs and the traps, yeah. but they build it all film like <sighs> film accurate. And yeah, it's so heavy. Some of this yeah, equipment, like it's it's like it weighs it you, yeah, it weighs you down. Um, but the, and they don't half ass it. It's like no. they completely they do it one hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they're um, a super fan, like, so they're the not. I say they're in every town. They're called the Essex Ghostbusters. Yeah, the local ones to here. Um, hit it. They're all over. Fantastic. They're all over. They're all over the world. Yeah. Um, I know what I'm googling after yeah. this. Yeah. What the? Yeah. See if there's any the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters or the well, Falmouth Ghostbusters. The Falmouth Ghostbusters. Yeah. There probably are some down there. I mean, it's not many people down there. I reckon. Uh, like, <laughs> cut, to be honest. Yeah. I think I th- they they do they travel around. They go to all like the comic cons and things. Yeah. And, yeah. <sighs> That's incredible. And there's lots of um, because he was on an episode of this. There's lots of like uh, Facebook fan pages and yeah. things and. There's a there's a community of Ghostbusters out there in the world. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I invited them along to the to the, to the cinema. Did they and, come? Yeah, they came and they stood outside with sweet. their proton packs and yeah. guarded the entrance. Sick. Did so, uh, so is is that your film? Like that you know, like you said about like I said about Anchorman. Would that be like one of yours? That's that, you, what, that made you want to act. Did it make that wasn't a film that made me want to act. I originally wanted to to make movies. Yeah, as, as in well. like direct and, D- write I did, I did. and If I think back to when I was young, for me the film that changed things for me was Back to the Future. Yeah, Back to the Future. Just I just connected with that film or all three. Yeah, the trilogy of films. They were my go to film if I was like having a sick day from school. Yeah, um, just could watch them. On, I don't know how many times I've watched those movies. I love Back to the Future. I really do. Um, um, I had that on my cinema as well. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I was yeah. like, I have to show that. But that was like the film for me. I don't know. No, for me, acting happened by mistake. Okay, I was gonna be. I was gonna be doing something in filmmaking. Yeah. Um, my brother's a filmmaker. Okay, and I was very much sort of like following. Following what my brother yeah. was doing, and I was like, "Yeah, this looks interesting." And when I was younger, we used to make movies at home, and I didn't quite understand what we were doing. Yeah, but like I would, we made like um, with my action figures, we made like stop motion that's cool. films yeah. and stuff. That is cool. Um, and there was like I've recently discovered that I was Doctor Who for a weekend, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I didn't even remember it until I found this old video. I was going to say, there's got to be video footage, maybe the, like the sonic the, screwdriver. The, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it must have been, it was before all the new stuff came. So I don't know, like, I don't I don't even remember being into Doctor Who when I was young. But yeah, there's a there's a Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> there's a Doctor Who. But yeah, my brother's into filmmaking and I enjoyed filmmaking at home with him and always yeah. was like, right, yeah, I'm going to be doing something in filmmaking. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, when I was 16, I a friend of mine encouraged me to go to um the playhouse in harlow okay the the main theater of the town we was at school one day in like a science or maths lesson and he said his mum worked at the place and he said he's been forced to join this amateur dramatics group <laughs> like his mum's forced him to but he was like it's actually pretty good oh so he was like coaxing you to yeah come yeah he like... was like it's actually like it's not that bad yeah and like I'm the only boy there. There's 30 girls <laughs> yeah. and I'm the only boy. And that's all the... All the and, <laughs> and he was like... Convincing. Uh, that, was, that was it. Yeah. And he was like, look, these girls, they don't know me. They love me. <laughs> <laughs> like, they have no idea who yeah. I am. They don't know what we're like at this school. Yeah. Because they're all from other schools. And he was like, just come along. Just yeah. come and try it out. And... Um, <laughs> I did, and I was like, it was me and him, yeah. <laughs> and all these girls, and I was just, I just found my, I just found my place. I just found my, that was in my yeah. element, not just because they get like initially because of all the girls. Yeah. I but was then so, it just turned into like a real love for a love for theatre from from there, mm. and still got a love for film. Mm. Um, never quite managed to make the. F- I've I've managed to 
have a little bit of success with like the theatre stuff. Yeah. But not with filmmaking at all. Like yeah. every time I've gone close to filmmaking, it's never, it's never really worked out for me. Do you know why? <laughs> like as in, do you reckon it's circumstance or do you think it's that you just prefer the theatre now? I think I've always done very well with the people and resources I have around me. Okay. So I've always done, now that I'm very connected within the theatre community mm. and people within that, yeah, the the community, the people, that I've always been able to bring theatre together, but because yeah. I've got no real connections in film. Uh, okay, yeah. It has, I, I feel like that's but perhaps... But in indie filmmaking, is you make your own connections. You yes, do, uh, yeah. Sort of, I, I still love and I still believe... Um, because I do know some people in fact I did it for a long time and mm -hmm. sort of know some people and I think once the show that we're doing is done we'll do a film just because mm -hmm. I'm I've, I still feel more comfortable in film mm -hmm. um but I really do believe that sort of um you know you you, you film a, a murder mystery in this place mm -hmm. and you could do it so low budget and it's it's story driven and you get some good actors yeah you get some decent camera wares it's so easy to find now it's it's cool it's sort of like mm -hmm. it saturates the market a little bit i know like some um you know some videographers some photographers sort of will moan about it a little bit mm -hmm. um but i think even they would be like well you know like i started 10 years ago and i could actually go and buy a decent camera rather than i know mm -hmm. people years ago and they'd be like you know you couldn't just go and you buy couldn't a camera. do that you couldn't yeah. just you know or like on your phone mm -hmm. um Famously, people film stuff on their phone. I, I yeah. wouldn't want to do that. But if you really wanted to, you well, can. Like I'm filming this on a phone, say, yeah. phone, phone right now because the yeah. quality you can just is do so it. high on the phones. Like the app, Apple just did their whole advert for this phone yeah. on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Of did, course, you, did, did you see yeah, that? They the did advert. the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. They they showed you how they make like even down to the. They editing. used to do those things as well. I don't know if it was this one, but the one before mm -hmm. the advertising was a short film, and it was like shot on whatever on the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you can. I still mm -hmm. think, and there's loads of festivals that you can put stuff into. Um, I've not done it in a while, my own stuff, but I I started doing that quite soon into being on set mm -hmm. when I just started, when I was a runner. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd go on set. I did, uh, like I said, I did a week's work experience at the old television centre in, um, where is it? It was uh, uh, Shepherd's Bush Way, is yes, it like... Yeah, um, yeah. Out that way. Um, why don't why why, I say uh, Westfield? It's because it's thing. It's why uh, Westfield. Why? Why? Oh my god! Why? I've been think? there so many times. Yeah, it'll come to us later. So Shepherd's yeah. Bush is like the next one. That's along. the long. Anyway, it's out there, isn't it? White City. There we go. Yeah, it's White, White City. City. Um, it's a television centre that's yeah. now still. I think it's like television centre still, but it's not the BBC hub. Right. It got disbanded. It's just studios for hire, yeah, basically. Yeah, I think Channel 4 do some stuff there. Yeah. You can go. But it used to be BBC. Mm -hmm. And um, I was 18. Summer that I just fluffed my A-levels. Yeah. And uh, I went in. It was a BBC uh, pilot uh, for a show called Wannabe. Never aired. Um, and it was a talent show. They've just brought out a talent show called Wannabe. Have they? Literally, what, BBC the BBC. Have? BBC. Have you seen it? I, what, I don't know. It if, I d it's about um, people that have no experience in the entertainment industry. Oh, it wasn't okay. Auditioning to be in the entertainment industry, so they'll no, they don't have any experience of acting, that but they want to give acting a go. How weird! Yeah. So this 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 version. Well, I guess that that's yeah. what happens with pilots sometimes. That yeah. they they give it a try. Something wasn't quite right. They shelve it and then they pick it back up that's five really years later. I have to look that up. Mm. I'm sure it's called Wannabe. It was called Wannabe at the audition stage because I yeah. saw it and someone sent it to me actually and said, "Oh, why don't you like why don't you go in for this?" Yeah. And I was like, "But I do actually have a little bit of experience. Yeah, I have too much. Be complete novice. Yeah, it's supposed of. to be like completely fresh. Like yeah. you want to give this a go, okay. but you're starting at yeah, you're starting at nothing." Oh, that's mad. So I just had that, just that little bit too much. Yeah, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, nice. I guess so. You know, I guess. There's a little bit of self-confidence. Yeah. You're kind yeah. of like, well, I'm not. I'm not novice. absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, this this version of Wannabe was, mm -hmm. um, I think I did like four or five days um, as like obviously like an unpaid uh, work experience guy. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I turned up, I was like, whoa, this is mad because... I was with like 23 year olds, mm -hmm. which are obviously very young, mm -hmm. but I was 18 and they'd just finished uni and they'd just finished um, 
whatever they did if it was like drama school or uni or film school mm -hmm. and uh, I was 18 and I honestly mate I remember there was a almost like a level of um I don't know what the emotion was like, it, it, jealousy or like a little bit of disdain because it was right, like okay y y what you haven't y who are you you've just for, come for you I think so not right. like nothing too hostile don't mm -hmm. get me wrong it was a long time ago I can't mm -hmm. it wasn't like they were beating me up and taking my lunch money <laughs> but I just remember it was which you kind of would be maybe you would be like hang on you're 18 you've just finished your A levels I've I'm so much debt behind me and I've got a degree but anyway that I did that and I was like oh this is cool maybe you know maybe I'm the guy maybe I'm the 1% that makes it sort of mm -hmm. thing and uh the show was a talent show so there was three pits of people and I, I think if I remember rightly it was um singers dancers and weirdly entertainers even though singers and dancers are entertainers yeah, but it would yeah. be like magicians or you right, know I okay. can do handstands or mm -hmm. something and it was kind of like that Toy Story crane grabber thing mm -hmm. where it would be like the light would come on and it would be like, go to pit one. And then, okay. then like, it was so weird. No wonder it didn't there. And uh, a light would come on and it would pick um, someone from that pit and they'd run up and they'd be like, yeah, it's my turn to audition. <laughs> um, and they'd go on stage. <clears throat> and this was the fun it bit. It sounds like they're treating like humans of like oh, some sort of weird, product. Like some sort of like farm, battle yeah. farming for <laughs> entertainers. Um, and they would go up on stage and they'd sing or they'd dance or they'd juggle or something. And then if they like, if the judges liked them, um, they would make it through to, it was, you know, the sort of X Factor boot camp type thing. Mm -hmm. If not, they would be ejected <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and literally ejected um, in some way. Like the most, the calmest way was just the lights in the studio went down mm -hmm. and it would go black. Um, or that was one of them. I think it was the lights in the studio go down, you walk to the judges, you get your talky talk, and then you go through to the next round, mm -hmm. or it was the trap door, right, okay. <laughs> and the trap door would go, and you'd just fall through it into, I don't know, wherever, Isn't below the stage. Such a cruel world. So cruel. Oh, horrendous. Imagine as well, like you sort of sing in your heart, even yeah, if you can't you, sing on national yeah. TV, and then you just just gone and yeah. then that's sort of I've got yeah. a friend that went on The Voice yeah and she she did she she sang her heart out on there on the stage and none of them turned none of the chairs turned around and that's just so it's soul crushing painful yeah. you can see it in her eyes when you watch mm. it back you can see the pain that of like break, it does break your heart yeah it? and it, what we put what we put entertainers through for, for our entertainment yeah. is is because there's a story really, behind her. Mm. there's a story behind like I say never air but there's a mm -hmm. story behind the dude who's juggling for his life yeah. and then he just you know either the chair doesn't turn around or the ground opens up and you disappear mm -hmm. um but yeah, that was my that was my job for the week was to to be essentially a runner on that, mm -hmm. um, and it was cool because it was uh, the judges were blast from the past. Obviously, Louis Spence was one of right. the judges. Pineapple yeah. Dance, Louis Spence, yeah, sure. um, Alan Carr, mm -hmm. and Claudia Winkleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, like my sort of like connection to famous people was was that like obviously mm -hmm. like you with George Clooney, the more mm -hmm. you do, you kind of go, oh yeah, I'm at them, I'm at them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I had to test the trap door. That mm -hmm. was me. And it, that was definitely like, you're the young and get up there, you know. Um, so I was up there and I just had to pretend I was dancing or whatever. And then the trap door went and I fell through it into like uh, crash mats and stuff. <clears throat> and then I come up and I was interviewed by Claudia Winkleman, like a fake interview, you know, right, kind okay, of like, yeah, this yeah. is what it's going to be. You know, I'll talk mm -hmm. to you. And I'm just 18 talking to Claudia Winkleman being mm -hmm. like, oh, this, oh is, hello. this is mad. <laughs> You're like, hi, I've seen you on the telly. Yeah. Um, but my favorite bit about it, and this this is still cool. And I think maybe this is when I was like, I've got to do this, man. This is, mm -hmm. I've got to stay here. I've got to be at Television Center. Uh, Friday Night with Jonathan Ross still filmed there. Mm -hmm. And it was the controversy with him and Russell Brands. He was just getting kicked off. Right. So, you know, he was sort of winding down. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was the penultimate episode. Um, and who's the, who's the tall supermodel? It's Australian. Um, oh, I can't remember her name. Elle McPherson, maybe? That name comes to my she head. She was in Friends. I think that was her. Is that the I one? I think that was her. Yeah. She Super was on model, the couch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, like you can YouTube it and watch the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else and Robin Williams. Nice. Um, and word got out. They were they were in the studio next to ours. Word got out that Robin Williams was in the building. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, just really anyone who cares about film 
well, who's not a fan yeah. it's like it's just Robin Williams he's just the him. legend yeah he's yeah. just him yeah. it's like you know, I don't think anyone dislikes him mm-hmm. even if you're not a super fan you know you like Miss Doubtfire <laughs> it's yeah. Just a, yeah. um, so he was in the building and it was really funny because it was kind of like a bit of a, a Benny Hill moment with me and the other uh, work experience guys where we just was looping around those big long corridors with the dressing rooms mm-hmm. just trying to get a glimpse of him and we'd sort of go round and round and round trying to see him his entourage, mate, his entourage picked up on it. And they weren't horrible, but they mm-hmm. were just like, come on, kids. Shoot. <laughs> um, but they, I was back of the queue, or back of the queue, back of the line. Mm-hmm. And they come out and said, like, we know what you're doing. You're trying to see Robin, like, please stop sort of thing. But I was at the back and I was like, oh, man, I'm not. <laughs> so clear in my head, I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to see Robin Williams. But, you know, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> And this is like, you know, this is like my pub pub story. And I, I walked past his dressing room as I'm sort of like sulking my way out. And he comes out and we walked into each other. And yeah. I walked, <laughs> I just walked into him. And um, his security, the dudes that shifted people on, again, like, you know, in my head, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But they wasn't. They would mm. just come over and sort of made sure that I wasn't a crazy person. Stood between me and him. But I just remember thinking, you know, like everyone and was trying to see him. So probably mm-hmm. we could say hello. And then I saw him and I was like, I can't say anything. <laughs> just, no, like one, words I just walked into him, yeah. but I was looking at him being mm-hmm. like, and then he sort of looked at me and, and that was it. And his security stood between the two of us and he walked down the corridor onto um, the set of Jonathan Ross. But he looked back over his shoulder at me. I'd never forget him. He looked over his shoulder. I don't know if he was talking to him, mm-hmm. or like talking about himself or me. And he just looked at me and he went, dead man walking. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I think I just got called a dead man walking by Robin Williams. I was like, that's cool. That's... And unless I was 18, I was about to go to yeah. Reading Festival, being like, this is going to kill at the campsite, you know. Um, but that was like nothing to do with writing, nothing to do with producing, directing. I was just like, I'm home, man. Mm-hmm. Like sort of this just is where down you, that this corridor, is where you need to be. People walking around mm-hmm. with coffees and on on meetings. You know, it was the time of like the Bluetooth Tusk. <laughs> so yes, like, yeah, it yeah. was like so people were talking to like production meetings. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, this is the coolest thing in the world. Like mm-hmm. I've got to make this work. Um, and after that, that's when I was like more of a runner full time. Mm-hmm. Did a lot of commercials because it's kind of just where I fell. Like I knew, I, I think I did a, I interviewed for like the Paul O'Grady show. Mm-hmm. Metal, you know, you, like you know, you meet someone who meets someone who meets someone, and yes, they go, "Oh, yeah. they've got a job going. You should mm-hmm. go for it." And then I ended up just doing commercial stuff because I knew one of the production managers. And for years, I just was a runner. Mm-hmm. And like we spoke about earlier, about reminding yourself how cool it is and how like good it is. I was working with runners who who would moan, and I just I would come home and tell my parents, and I'd be like, "I can't see how you moan about this." I was like. We're getting paid and well, you mm-hmm. know, especially on commercials because it used to be the, um, I think it was called the APA standard rates. So it was right. like um, you get a minimum, you know, mm-hmm. and runners would get a hell of a lot less than everyone else. Mm-hmm. But to an 18 year old or 19 year old, it's pretty good. I think I even remember it was like 175 quid a day. Mm-hmm. I mean, now you wouldn't grumble at 175 no. quid a day. You'd be like, you're yeah. sweet. But to an 18 year old who's like, I don't know, making coffee for people like Robin Williams, you'd be like, I'd, I'd do it for a fiver. I'd do it mm-hmm. for nothing. You, could, yeah. I'll pay you. What are you talking about? Like, um, But the other runners and stuff would, would complain and I'd be like, blow my mind. Why do, you, why do you think they were complaining? Why do you think they were? Age. Weirdly, it was the... Because they've been doing it for too long. Too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember good friends of mine who, even though there was 10 years between us... Because like, no one, people, at no point did you want to be thinking... I'm going to be a runner for the rest of my no, life. Of course not. And I understand. You want it, you want it, to, yeah. le- you want it to lead somewhere, don't you? I guess that, yeah. that is the idea. I saw yeah. that with my brother. My brother is a the film director, producer now. Yeah. But he started off as a runner. Yeah. And I saw him do that for, a, for a, I think he did that for about eight years, it's, eight, nine years. For a long time. Before he yeah. got into a position of be working with, in a, in a specific department yeah. of being an editor. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that's, but, I, but, I went into editing as well. But yeah, yeah, it took him that much time to get there, and then yeah, yeah and then once he was there, he was, was there. he kind of um, confident the whole time that it would lead to something, or did he hundred percent? Sort of, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I I always saw him as like I, I remember he'd do things like he he 
he'd run out of money, but mm. he'd still make sure he got to a film set. Like he'd he'd jump yeah. the trains yeah. to get to work. You just got to do it. You know, he would yeah. make he would make sure he you make the opportunity there. happen. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. He gave up so much to have the career that that he's now got. Yeah. You know, and I think that is within this industry that you do have to make a lot of sacrifices, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I think. And so those ones that, and people that are moaning, perhaps maybe they've given made the sacrifices, but still not quite found their way. Perhaps. Yeah, and I, I like I say I do sympathise because I remember not only being like, how can they be complaining, but mm-hmm. then weirdly, hypocritically, would be like, they're thirty, what are they doing, still running? Like, yeah, yeah. And then you hit thirty, and you're not where you want to be, but you're mm-hmm. so much closer. But. I don't know why 30 is just an age, but it yeah. is, isn't it? It's 30 yeah. is just the age that people go. Well, when you're younger, you have some kind of expectation of what life's going to be like by yeah. that time, don't you? I think you? so. The I house, the car. It's <laughs> the 500 days of summer expectation yes, versus is, yeah. reality. And mm-hmm. and reality is not bad, man. Like, re- mm-hmm. like, well, obviously some are, but like you can make your reality good even if it's not your expectation. I really believe mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But you've just got to find happiness in it. Mm-hmm. You sort of go... Um, me I talk personally but like like yourself you'd be like okay I'm not George Clooney but I'm working on a George Clooney film mm-hmm. I'm also like want to make my cinema like you were saying here and I get to do the podcast being like that yeah. reality is wildly different but you explain it to someone and I, I'm i I'm the dude you explain that to and I'm like that's so cool yeah. because you could be in a bank <laughs> you could yeah, be in exactly, a bank yeah. it's like yeah. um, but I do I did understand the sort of frustration but I, I I remember sort of thinking like I oh, like like I said before I'm home like I just want to mm-hmm. do this and I'd I'd work crazy hours as people do on film sets my my dad's a yeah. uh, London black cabbie right okay um, and he used to take me in excuse me he used to take me in at like five in the morning drop me to Holborn because mm-hmm. he used to do a lot of stuff out in um, Park Royal Studios and like mm-hmm. out in like West Acton way um, I'd get the tube out and I'd be on set for seven having got up at half past four mm-hmm. but genuinely like skip home at half past 11 at night get in bed and do it all the next mm-hmm. day because i was just so happy um, just to be part of that just to be part of it yeah, yeah and mm. and then i did like i was saying to you about like making my own or i was gonna say to you about making my own films mm. i was just like right okay well i did that for about three or four years oh no i probably did it for about two or three years i think 1890 yeah about 2021 mm. Then I started writing my short film. You just said about moments with your son, about like picking mm-hmm. your moments to go to uni. And I, I was just like, right, this is my moment. Now, I, I know some cameramen. I know some people. I think if I write something, I could pull in some people and we'll, we'll mm-hmm. make some films. Um, and I did, and I wrote comedies, I think, because of Anchorman. Right, okay. I just went yeah. straight to comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wrote a, a silly film with like... I mean, most of them, apart from the ones at the end, were with friends and family. Like you say, you sort of go, you get your brother in to act yeah, a bit, yeah, you yeah. get your friend in. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called, uh, the first one was called A Lyrical Love. And it was, uh, I mean, I my mum and dad love soul, soul music, mm-hmm. like uh, like Motown, but soul music. So we always used to listen to like Teddy Pendergrass, it was like Sunday morning mm-hmm. and Teddy Pendergrass would be on or like the Commodores or something. And... Um, Close the Door by Teddy Pendergrass. You know the song? Um, no, I can't say that. I won't sing it for you. No. I'll, I'll ruin it because yeah, I'm not Teddy <laughs> Pendergrass. It, I'll look it's up. like the sexiest song mm-hmm. in the world. It's just like, the lyrics are like, close the door, let me rub your back where you say it's sore. Okay. <laughs> Hilarious, mate. Yeah. But because Teddy Pendergrass sings it, it's mm-hmm. the coolest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. But I used to listen to it and just think, this is so funny because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was imagining like a story around that song. And I wrote something called A Lyrical Love and it was, I don't know where the idea come from. It was just following the lyrics, I think. Mm-hmm. And it was about a, uh, a perfume salesman who was trying to pitch his perfume to a pharmaceutical company and his perfume was called Love. Mm-hmm. Um, and his pitch was to go into the boardroom, play Close the Door and just kind of like dance and sing the Teddy Pendergrass song to him. Um, <laughs> but it goes wrong and he ends up spraying like the... Um, the CEO in the eye with the perfume and she runs out and stuff mm-hmm. um, but we made it and I, I I don't really know how we did because I was so young I mm-hmm. was like 20 21 and just you just did it 
I wasn't at uni, like I, said, I wasn't yes, attached yeah. to anything. I was just like, right, I did it at the Civic. Like I say, mm-hmm. it was just sort of um, there. I pulled in some people I knew. There was mm-hmm. a guy, a, a director I worked with. I got him in to help me. Um, we had an editor. We had this, that, and the other. I didn't really think about not being able to use it because of the music rights. It mm-hmm. was just, I want to make this. I want to see this on screen. I taught myself how to edit with uh, following this director editor guy. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and it was the coolest thing for me. It was like, I sat my family down the first to see it, put it on my laptop, the smallest screen could, <laughs> and watched it. And uh, I made my dad laugh, <laughs> man. And that's like no easy feat. Yeah, it's, yeah. My dad's the nicest guy in the world, but that Jack D grumpiness, right, okay, kind yeah, of yeah, like, yeah. you know, you could sort of, you just don't see him <laughs> laugh like that. And he just laughed and I was like, oh, that's it. You've that's done the it. moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we put that it That goes on. back to that moment when you was watching Anchorman. Yeah. Yeah, it was, wanting, it was just to, like, wanting to be able to do I that I want to do others. this. Yeah, how, how can yeah. I do this? And obviously I made my mum and brother and that laugh. Mm-hmm. And we put it on Vimeo and YouTube mm-hmm. and then put it on Facebook. And some people knew we would, that I'd done it and some people didn't, but... Yeah. I mean, probably now it wouldn't be a huge reaction, but to me at the time it was, people were just like, what the hell have you done? This is hilarious. Mm -hmm. And also seeing people they knew in it and being like, it's stupid, it's funny, it's crazy, but it was like, you made a film, what the hell? Like, um, and from that moment we did like, I think we did three or four more. Mm -hmm. Um, And did, have you gone on to win some awards or you put some in festivals, have you? Yeah, so that one Mm -hmm. couldn't go to festivals because of the music. Yeah. Um, which was, and it I, was not really supposed to be for that. It was more like... More just you doing the thing. Yeah, you it get, was the first thing that I was like, mm-hmm. right, let's film this. Let's test the waters to see if I can do it. Because that's such an important thing to do is to do it for the sake of doing it. Other yeah. than doing it for the audience, doing it for some kind of yeah. congratulatory thing. Congratulatory, is that a word? We'll go with it. I know yeah, exactly like, what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah through, through just wanting some kind of recognition, like awards and ceremonies and things. All the Oscar bait movies, isn't it? Yeah. Like, they lack heart and soul, mm. but sometimes they win awards because they're designed for yeah. that way. Um, but they don't, they, don't, they don't turn me on. They don't, like, I really, I think if no. something's got more heart like so that American fiction from you just felt it was authentic mm-hmm. and it it was real and they were like you know this is the best script we've got and luckily enough for them it obviously but the ones that you can tell that they're doing it for the awards often don't win the awards don't win do yeah because, because they just because people see yeah, through it see through it yeah but yeah the, the lyrical I think love, Napoleon was a good example of oh, that oh Napoleon I didn't did you see it no I haven't I didn't seen, see it I haven't seen it but from everything that I hear and I'm not interested in seeing it Either I don't th- I, like I, I might give it a go at some point, but I'm not I'm not drawn to it. It just nah, I'm not, it, I'm not, it feels like it was forced for awards. Yeah, there was definitely you know? a, a design element mm. there where it was like, you know, it's either like say this is going to make some big money or this is going to win gonna us some win. awards, and, mm. and it ended up doing to, neither. Neither, <laughs> absolutely neither. Fell yeah. on its fell flat on its face, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I always think with film, at least, I think theatre is probably the same, but it skewed a bit. I always thought that film had to be like the perfect, like holy trinity of like things. It was like, mm-hmm. it's got to be entertaining because it just has to be. It's the entertainment industry. So mm-hmm. you've got to make something like Back to the Future. It's entertaining. It's got to be artsy because it's an art form. You know, mm-hmm. you can kind of go like whether that art is comedy or it's it, it's drama or it's, um, I don't know, something so yeah. sad. There's an artistic element. Mm-hmm. And then there's the money. It's mm-hmm. got to make money, otherwise it it won't go anywhere and you'll never make something again if mm-hmm. you've got a track record of making things that, you know, not on an amateur level, but like, no. you know. And I think if you hit those three things, I don't know, the, the films like, and the big films like Oppenheimer, you kind of go, well, yeah, of course, because it's artsy, mm-hmm. it makes money and it's entertaining. Um, mm-hmm. But the smaller films that don't have that budget, they can still be uh, the Little Miss Sunshines of the world. Like, I love that film. Yeah. And it's it's that uh, to me it's that perfect like triangle of like mm-hmm. art entertainment and it made some money and it's got a legacy. Yeah. And I always try and think of like the most authentic story I can when mm-hmm. I write something or if I'm even if I'm producing something because it's like if like we said people will see through something be like they're just if we took our show on stage at Edinburgh Fringe and they're like they're just after a fringe award aren't they? Mm. It, you people was not silly like they can see through it I've, I've done it I've done it myself with theatre I um, early on in my 
theatre directing, trying to do it as a business. Yeah. Uh, I'd seen a good friend of mine doing kids shows. Yeah. Uh, mini pantomimes very well. Um, and bringing good audiences in, selling out very well, making some good money. And I saw a way to do it cheaper, mm. but the same thing. Yeah. And it didn't work because I was trying to cut all the corners. Your and heart, because heart wasn't there. It was, because I was lit. I, I thought nothing more than the money. Yeah. That was my goal. That was my goal. My it goal ha- was it happens, my goal yeah. was to go right. I can do that at half the price, mm-hmm. and I can bring in the same amount of money. And you do it at half the price. The quality is stripped out of it. Yeah, of course. And it people is, aren't yeah. happy, and they don't return the next time that you come to put something. on. Yeah, there's a reason, isn't there? That's mm-hmm. sort of like you kind of go. That's got its price point because of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just I, I like authenticity. Mm-hmm. It's just a weird thing to say. Most people probably would say that, but it really is mm-hmm. like a core value of me. It's like if I can be authentic and whatever I put out there is authentic, I like to think it's sort of that karma thing is like it's reciprocated. Yeah. You know, if I'm only me, then people will only be them back to me. Not mm-hmm. always, but you hope for that, don't you? And I and I hope with this, with the podcast, yeah. when I'm talking on this, I'm not you know, for years I was trying to do like the whole acting thing and I thought that's how I had to be yeah. all the time. I always had to be presenting some person that wasn't me. Yeah. But as soon as I stepped back and just started sitting back in a chair and being me, I feel like it's working for me yeah. so much better than it was before. I get, I mean, I've watched like mm-hmm. like other episodes of this and sort of the tone is always the same. Like the guests obviously vary differently, yes, but yeah. like in terms of how relaxed it is and sort of how you come across it is and it's like it's the reason i listen to it because i could just be like on my run be like no skip but you yeah listen through and like you say some mm-hmm. of them are, and some of the ones you do i've listened to like are like hour plus two yeah, hours yeah. And, and sometimes like, they go off on different tangents and different places yeah. and i'm starting to cut them all up now as okay. well so that you've yeah. got like smaller With episodes like the, and the nugget the stuff. nuggets yeah. oh, thank you so nuggets, much it's, yeah. it's so nice to have to hear that people yeah, are no, listening i've, I've, I've scrolled mate I've, I've gone through yeah. I've, I've been I running a lot recently that's so, that yeah. that is really like the the mark of like you feel like you're doing you're doing all right when someone else goes acknowledges yeah, just an acknowledgement is like that's quite a big thing yeah you know it's nice to see like the numbers are working in the right direction because these things take time yeah to grow these things but the numbers are working and that's nice to to look at but i'm trying i'm trying not to look at that too much it can be i can imagine it's like weirdly addictive in that sort of uh Uh, obsessive dopamine feed oh i've got another light yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, i get that yeah because that's what social media is isn't it just a a dopamine feed it's it's why you scroll yeah because the next thing will be better the next thing will be better you know give me give me give me Um, yeah but i think yeah no mate honestly it's it's cool i I love what you're doing because Yeah. yeah i think if i could i'm always like there's people i know that do you know everyone knows people people do the most obscure things mm-hmm. like um i mean and last night for an example with one my best friend in the entire world my oldest friend and um we went to a darts place in in bishop stortford mm-hmm. um he was like i want to take you there because it's like interactive darts whatever um and just to give him the rundown on the weekend with the shows and stuff mm-hmm. and uh halfway through one of the games he's like says about playing like a D&D, like Dungeons and Dragons night. No. And this dude has never <laughs> expressed an interest in Dungeons and Dragons. And okay. like naturally, like he's your oldest pal in the world. So yeah, you yeah, kind yeah. of go like, you geek, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then he was like, we're laughing. But then he just tells me about it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, because this, and you craft the story. And there's like, he was playing with our old friends. And, mm-hmm. and I was in it because I could see how, how much he enjoyed it. And I was just, you know, like, I could listen to someone talk about frogs for three hours if they're if like, they, and if this they frog, you wouldn't it, yeah. believe it, mate, because mm-hmm. it just shines. I think it genuinely shines. And yeah. I always want to be that dude. I want to be like, I think what I do is cool, mm-hmm. but if you sort of go about it in a mopey way, people are like, oh, well, why are you, why are you doing it? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. well, you don't, do you care about or, it? Or in a false way. Or in a false way. Where you're trying to do it It's going to make me rich, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the short films was purely love. It was just... Mm-hmm. I. I like I said, I loved, I loved the dopamine hit of like, oh my God, people mm-hmm. are like, you know, we used to have to, do you remember Stonehouse in Hartford? It's a bit sort of, it's a, it a nightclub no, <laughs> that we no, used to go to. It's no. Pop World now. But right, um, okay. I remember being in Stonehouse mm-hmm. and uh, people you loosely know from other schools, mm-hmm. but they would coming up and being like, 
saw your film sort of thing and, and laughing like oh my god like, no man it's yeah. funny like it's cool it's like i liked that mm -hmm. like you just said about yeah. me with you know, and that's okay to, that's okay to yeah. get that that gratification it shouldn't be a bad it's not a bad thing no. it, i get i guess the over consuming of that is where it becomes bad or only chasing that yeah i think if you get to a bad. level where it builds an unhealthy ego that's probably mm -hmm. where you know you fall off and it can be bad but no, maybe it's not a bad thing, like you say, because it, it makes you want to do it again, for yeah. one. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel good. It feels nice. It feels good. Not hurting anyone. Yeah, you're like, oh, it wasn't just Nan that mm -hmm. washed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I made, uh, yeah, we made a few. I did like a little team, um, like loose. And it's nice to be part team. of something, isn't it? Oh, so not do then. something completely yeah. on your own. That's the other thing where I compare this to like when I was doing all the acting. When I, when I did acting, I always felt like I was on my own. Okay. Even... Like, you'd go and be part of something for five minutes. Yeah. But then you're on your own again. Is that because you are just playing your part? Yeah, I guess so. You do so much time as an act. You spend so much time as an actor, reading the lines, learning the lines. You come together with people for five minutes, but then you're off again. Yeah. On I your think own. The, like, the sort of competitiveness plays there's into There's a lot as well. of that as well. Like, people... Yeah. I don't know what there's like. no there's no one kind of yeah you d it's very rare to get actors looking out for other actors people not want to be friends it's like you know it's yeah, no, like they do want to be friends but not not really but, <laughs> but, but they don't want you to get mark, a part over yeah. they don't want you to get a part over there yeah of course not you yeah. know there's a not there's not a lot of helping each other out and helping each other up yeah. I don't think not enough of it for sure it can be quite toxic I suppose yeah. Can't it? yeah yeah but, um, but I suppose with this, though, you get to bounce off, hopefully bounce off people. Yeah, I'm meeting loads of different people, yeah. bouncing off people. I'm actually building a bit of a community with yeah. this as well. That's why I like listening which is to quite it, because nice. you're kind of like, I mean, I'm not from Harlow, but mm -hmm. I didn't grow up too far away. Like I said, I was born in was born in Enfield and then yeah. sort of grew up in Chesant and then Broxbourne and whatever. But, you know, I used to come to Harlow to go to the cinema. I used mm -hmm. to go to the laser tag and whatever. Right, okay, and that, yeah. So I know people from Harlow. Mm -hmm. And then when you hear, I don't know, when you hear people that um, are from your area mm -hmm. doing stuff, you're like, oh, I didn't know that. What? See, I that's, I was that's interesting dude. as yeah. well, because one thing I am trying to be wary of, and this brings it back to like the whole business element of all of this, is that I don't want to turn this into like a community radio station. Mm. Like I don't want to do yeah. this just as a hobby. Yeah, I want this to continue to grow into something bigger. Yeah. I started off with the local community. Yeah, who's here? But I want it. I want the the circles do feel like they're getting bigger. Yeah, and reaching out. But I don't want it to get too tied down in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Into just this. I get that. Into I just get this that. town. Because you, you could. Know. I mean, one, you, you, it could run dry. There's mm -hmm. sort of only so many. Yeah. Creatives in this sort of radius, in, yes. but also, you know, just people. And how does that sound? If people are listening in from from outside of the yeah. town, which they are, there's no connection to this this town. Yeah. Then, then they'll start. Then people won't have any interest in what no, engage that's true. with it. I think as well, like the perspectives thing. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of go, as someone who's up north, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, it was harder, it was easier, it was this. You know, oh, because where I'm from, do this. I think that would be quite cool as well, because yes, you're yeah. talking about the their creative achievements, but also how their own backstory plays into it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and obviously, like. The person you live next door to, even if you live in Harlow, will have a different backstory. But yeah. really, the product of your environment thing plays into it. So. Definitely. And that's for me. So you mentioned you're going to Edinburgh. Yes, we go like, to Fringe for the so, month. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also going to go up there. That's cool. I don't know. To do, to I, do this. I don't, I don't know how yet. I haven't worked the, I ins, and, work, the ins and outs. I've spoken to a few different people. And you know how people are with different ideas. Some people yeah. have gone to me. There's no, you can't make that work. It's not possible. Don't, don't, as don't soon even, as you as soon as you said it, I mm. I can see it though. Not just mm -hmm. saying that, like as in, I mean, you're in the world's biggest arts festival. Yeah. I mean, even if it's like weather dependent, you're on the street. And well, that's what just, I'm thinking. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Like the 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 entry level idea is kind of I go up there, get a flight, yeah. find some find somewhere to stay, or maybe I rent a caravan. That'd and be cool. a motor caravan and, yeah. and drive up there. Yeah, um, you can stay just outside. It'd be a lot. Literally stay cheaper. outside. And if I had a motor caravan, maybe I could invite people into the caravan. Yeah, to do in like a non creepy way. Yeah, in a non creepy <laughs> way. Yeah, um, maybe I'll have someone with me that yeah. so it feels uh, so it doesn't feel <laughs> <laughs> like getting all these actresses yeah, yeah. off the street and things. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, try so that's the, the the entry level idea is to just go up there yeah. and just to make something happen. That is I'm a there. real roll of the dice sort of yeah. radical move. That's cool. Yeah, but yeah. but it's expanding the, the this whole thing yeah. out that, of that, the town. The, the nugget thing that you do could play into that quite mm-hmm. well because you know it's, it's I've not been. Sure, you know it's busy, it's bustling, but mm-hmm. just sort of you know like you know, like Martin on the street type thing. Yes, be like, are you a creative or are you do you just here because you love the mm-hmm. festival and then. You know, see like, where you, like you said with this conversation and everyone you talk to, you see where their conversation goes. Mm-hmm. You don't know what someone's going to say. It could be the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you don't know who you're bumping into and what no. what their future has in has in store. Yeah. And I like what idea. they're connected yeah. to. So it's yeah, it's getting around. It's getting myself in those other communities yeah. in in amongst those other circles. But yeah, even doing this on stage, yeah. there is um, Pete Wicks and. There's two guys from Made in Chelsea. Okay. Do a podcast. Yeah. They're touring the country. Doing like a live show. Doing basically this. Yeah. Getting sold out theatres. That's touring, isn't it? Like like basically a touring radio show. A touring radio show that people want to see them have a chat live. Yeah. And yeah, they prat around and they have some stupid games and Q&As and things. But really at the heart of it is a chat. At the heart of it is a chat. And they've got the Apollo theatre in London which is sold out that's insane like to see two dudes just there uh, chatting shooting the shit <laughs> yeah. so I think there is I think there is a, a want and a need yeah from from people that they want to definitely engage yeah. they want to feel like they're part of a, an authentic conversation yeah. Um, so yeah maybe if I could find some way to a space that yeah well I'd talk to you mate yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, well, I'll come up there and I'll meet you, yeah. and uh, maybe we'll have a chat after after your show or something. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a chat with your actors, and yeah, and it could be good promotions for the show as well. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, every every show up there wants to promote their show, don't they? Yeah, 100%. they want to get bums on seats, and, and it's you know you're competing with thousands of people. Yeah. It's not like um, you know you've not you've got your slot on mm-hmm. like we have. Um, and lucky enough, we've got a good time. Like we're on at seven thirty in the evening and we're doing the month um wow. but that's a real that's prime time yeah mm. um and that that don't get me wrong like i like to think that it's because of course i'm gonna say that, i like to think it's because the show holds weight and the way that we've um sold it to mm-hmm. them that they think it's good enough but when we when we got in touch with like theaters and stuff we um we had like uh you know just realistic expectations and we was like we're doing fringe anyway that's going to mm-hmm. happen um I don't know what time it will be because, you know, it's it's competitive. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long it will be because someone might be like, yeah, we're, we're, we're busy anyway. We've got a busy schedule. We don't really do this mm-hmm. like for longer than a week, two weeks, whatever. But this this guy, um, <coughs> excuse me, who, at the space, we're at one of his venues um, in Surgeons Hall. It's right in the, right the centre. Um, and he got back to us and mm-hmm. he spoke to my like business partner, Matt, and he was like um, chatting to him. And Matt phoned me afterwards to tell me like what had happened, and he was like, "Mate, he just was like, uh, I see this as the um, like the after dinner show, mm-hmm. and obviously Matt's on the phone, and Matt's Scottish anyway, so that probably helps." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, um, he's like, okay, okay, um, yeah, that's that's cool." And he was like, "Yeah, we would love to. Can you do the run? Would you be able to like do the the run?" And Matt's like, "Yeah, but the whole time." And he was like, "If you can." Mm-hmm. And obviously, just without thinking, he's like, yeah, yeah, sign us up. And before we knew it, we was 7.30, <clears throat> centre of Edinburgh every night. And it's like, that's cool. That's that's, that's the amazing. opportunity, yeah. But that's even a, that, then... For, for a, that's the first time up there. First time up there, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we, we're first time mm-hmm. company, first time production. See, company. some people have said to me, like, there's no chance of getting a space now. Like, zero chance. And then as someone else... now or just yeah, like, so, as in... Yeah, so if I was want if I was wanting to, I don't necessarily to, believe that. No, see, and then someone else said to me that um, there's a lot of cancellations start to happen. Yeah, definitely. nearer the time, a lot of people start. They didn't realise how much hard work it actually. Yeah, be production to get up apart there. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's probably you just need to be on it with looking. Yeah, I'd just, imagine. I don't know. And and to be available for it. Yeah, available. If you've got, and if, open yeah, I mean, to if you show willing, I mean, like. Mm-hmm. It's the Edinburgh Fringe, you know. You people, <laughs> yeah. people drop everything to be able to just have yeah. one night there, mm-hmm. um, let alone whatever you want to do the whole run that's yeah. and stuff. But, but yeah. So, but even like where where we are and what we are, the competition for after dinner shows is still crazy. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it's um, it's mad. We've got to sort of 
so just you being there and people like you and a bit of promotion and a bit of genuine promotion yeah it's like we're an nice. opportunity to talk about not just the show but the people that are, are involved with the show yeah why your show is different to all the other shows that yeah. that are there you don't get you know on a on a leaflet you don't necessarily get to to have that and people pick up a thousand but, leaflets a day yeah they? whereas you could do something like this it could then it could be live streamed so it could be live on Instagram, yeah. Facebook. Well, it sounds like you've got loads of ideas. Yeah, the the ideas are there. The ideas are there. I've just got to make yeah. it make it all make it all come together. Um, I guess I should pro I should probably try and reach out to venues because it would be nice to give it a go. Yeah, you probably got, I imagine I could even I could. Do you know what? Adding into that, I should probably do a test here, as in like a live. Do audience. a live one here. Yeah, just yeah, that's a, true. Just as a trial. Yeah, because we get a lot of people come here to do trials that then go to Edinburgh for yeah. full shows. But why not try this? I think it would do. I I, th I think it would do well. But I was mm -hmm. I was thinking, <clears throat> like just visually when you said about like doing it here, I was thinking mm -hmm. what it would be like if we were facing the other way, and there's people who are genuinely interested in what you've got to say mm -hmm. and what I've got to say. And they like say when you was an actor on your own. And like it was hard to keep that energy up, and you was like, "Oh, I feel alone." Mm -hmm. There's two people; you naturally feel better when there's other people. I think it just brings brings it up yeah. even more. Um, hundred percent. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Yeah, I did this. It's talking about the energy there. It reminds me of I, I got that energy buzz from an audience earlier this year. I did a a play in a day at London, at a London Fringe. How'd pub. it go? It, it, it was an amazing experience. The first part of the day was horrible. It Why? was glass wire. Well, we got the scripts that morning, which I knew that that Naturally. would be the, yeah, be the case. Be um, so we had from like ten o'clock to three o'clock to to rehearse. Yeah. Um, the director was he was a, he was a great guy, but he hadn't done something like that either before. Okay. And I could feel the clock ticking. I yeah. could get see us getting closer and closer to three o'clock when we would stop rehearsing. Yeah, um, and we had to rehearse the last scene in the in prep next door. <laughs> <laughs> and after I did that, I was like, I could just run. Like this is gonna this is gonna be <laughs> gonna the, me, yeah. the this is gonna be the most embarrassing evening of my life. Yeah. I didn't tell anyone I knew to cut to come. I yeah. didn't advertise it anywhere. I kept it quiet because I I knew it wouldn't you know it had the potential to be bad. Yeah. Um, but it was feeling like this could be like one of the worst evenings of my life. And then I heard that it sold out and it's 70 seats. Where was, what was the, the red line theater? Yeah, I know the red line. Yeah. yeah. So you can fit 70 up there. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> like this is going to be bad. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, do I, do I run or do I just go through with it? And I stayed, yeah. but I was getting really nervous. But as I walked out, in front of that audience, the energy from them changed something and not just me, but the other people on stage as mm -hmm. well and made the whole show come together. That's cool. It That's just, what the, you want. the audience yeah. made it come together because there wasn't a moment for working things out, for pausing and stopping yeah. and uh, for consideration. We just had to go through the process of yeah. doing, doing this play. And how did it go? And it, and it went well. It That's went well. There wasn't, yeah. there wasn't any, there wasn't any mishaps. There wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't word for word perfect or anything like that. Yeah. But it was an hour and a half performance with no interval. That's so intense. that's but you know that's quite intense. That's quite a long time. But it was I, I definitely contribute that to the audience. Yeah. Their energy, them being there. Yeah. But I've, I've seen it firsthand mm. and sort of like you know, yeah. I mean the actors command the audience but the audience can command the actors and yeah. sort of yeah the power that they can bring mm -hmm. even if it's small even if it's a small audience you've got a small audience not 70 you know it could be 10 20 yeah. but if they're up for it it just sort of yeah you've got that bounce haven't you mm -hmm. um so imagine like say even with a podcast you'd be like yeah you no know, people really like listening and i did and, some uh some what are called lambda exams Okay. Um, and they're like act, they're like some small acting qualifications, and I had an audience when I was doing the qualifications for two people, two two judges. Yeah, and even that trans was transformative. Oh, really, in the performance, yeah. even that took me from doing a performance at one level 
to a different level. Yeah. Because again, you know that their their attention is engaged on you. Yeah, really watching you. Really yeah, and there's yeah. there's nothing else. You know, like you talked about when you're at the cinema. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're and there for they're that, there and that alone. For, and that alone, and everything else in the world has gone, but you and you and them. And uh, yeah, that that reminds me of that as well. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I think that could add something really special to this. Yeah, doing it in front of a live audience. At the very least, you try it and you kind yeah. of well, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't you know? work. And it's like yeah, yeah it, it works doesn't in work. This format, you go back to it. Yeah. yeah, but I think that could help me take this to the next level. Yeah, to stop this from becoming just a cut, because I think there's too much. I'm, in my guess, and you sitting here today and sharing these stories, I feel like there's too much potential in it yeah. to keep it. As a, and if you as get, a local, like say, so if you get like the fire in your belly, and you mm-hmm. really, I mean, I, I've I've believed in things before that may not work, but I, I honestly, I really do believe and think that the things that I have believed in the most are the ones that have succeeded. I don't know mm-hmm. if it's because it's that sort of um, willing it on and yeah. sort of I don't know, like for want of a better word, because it's a bit of a skewed term but like the manifestation of it I don't know if it's that Mm -hmm. or if it's just because actually it was just a good idea and you're smart enough to follow that one through I feel I I genuinely feel like there's within this there's a purpose yeah that is beyond me Mm -hmm. and and I have a vision for where this is going okay well that's good that's and and again whether that vision is manifestation or whether it's just an idea but, but back I to can, like the name of like you know, like saying kangaroo court or words and mm-hmm. ideas like sometimes it doesn't need to be a reason why you think it's good it might just be yeah. good if you're like you know still, don't second guess those things sometimes yeah maybe the the whole pulling it apart and trying to work it out mm-hmm. isn't actually doing us any good no it's just just doing it is the thing that yeah, we need to do I think so I've I've tried to do that <clears throat> I get carried away with certain things and sort of trying to plan them with, to within an inch of their life mm-hmm. you know creative and non creative even to like you know yeah trips <laughs> but when you but, but when you're when you're producing a play you do have to yeah to do that that's do. a different yeah you know, ball game mm-hmm. completely because you've got to be so switched on and i know you can be a creative producer mm-hmm. um but it's so different to everything i've done before when i was doing my short films i produced it mm-hmm. but it was that um that sort of classic you know starting out like written directed and produced by joseph cobb and the producing, it wasn't anything really. It was no. kind of like calling up the cameraman you work with on set and being like, are you right to come and film this thing? You know? mm-hmm. Now this is like producing. It's mm-hmm. like everything from scratch to thinking scratch about to Thinking about the money, thinking about the logistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything is sort of like, I mean, we try and explain it to my, um, to, to my nan. Mm-hmm. And I get it because it's kind of like, oh, I know what a writer does. I know what an actor does. You know, a director tells them, you know, in the loosest mm-hmm. sense, tells them what to do and how it should be this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what are, you, what are you doing with this? And it's like, I don't know, just with this, because it's small anyway, be like, right, okay, so you, you've got the script. The writer goes, I've got the script. And then, I mean, but it, it sounds patronising when you say it like this, but being like, and then what? And you kind of go, you need actors. Be like, cool. So, yeah, I source the actors, you know, be like, and then you like, need a place to rehearse. But like, yeah, I'll find somewhere to rehearse. You know, like, and it's just sort mm-hmm. of that boom, 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 everything. I, I think I, I see it in a way producing as you're kind of connecting all the dots of all the yeah. other people doing. You've got the, lots of strands and you're sort of. Yeah, and you've got to keep them all because creative people genuinely can, they can kind of be a bit messy. Yeah. And you've got, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you've got to keep them focused and on, yeah. you know, on track to, to get you to that goal. I, um, I'm not a messy creative. Mm. I will always say I'm a writer before anything because I, I just love it. I do. I love the, the world building. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of, even, uh, that term can sometimes apply to more fantasy sci-fi things where you literally build worlds, but mm-hmm. just the world where that perfume salesman exists because it doesn't exist. You know, there wasn't the company and there wasn't mm-hmm. him or whatever. I love that. And I'm still amazed at the human brain that, you know, I, I I wrote my first ever or finished my first ever feature length script last year, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to get it out there. And just it was based on a true story, but there's lots in it that wasn't real. And I I read through it, and I'm just like, it sounds um, it's sort of like is it self-aggrandizing? I don't mean it to be that, but like mm-hmm. that come from that doesn't no one said that. Yeah, I, I just but in my head I was like they would say that while they're walking over there and just 
that creation that is i mean that is the term creative you are mm -hmm. creating you know and i love that you know mm -hmm. that's why actors love to say the words because that's their first love to me i like to write them i mm. just would sort of i fall in love with it every time i sit down and write i just sort of like what's your writing process look like then um is there one because you're not messy i'm not messy i don't um i edit as i go along which everyone will tell you don't do it mm -hmm. and even when i did my degree recently it was like just i mean it's so bog standard industry thing be like get down just get the story write this you'll go back get it, and get it edit. finished yeah. i can't do that mm -hmm. and i don't think that's a bad thing it's like what maybe back to the school thing is that like that's not me mm -hmm. and if i try and make that me it's only going to make something bad to me i go through and i get one scene mm -hmm. and then i'm like nah, they wouldn't say that like no nah. and i go back and it's and by the time i get to the end it's probably had the equivalent of four drafts mm -hmm. but i've only written it once because i just go back because i I have to have it clear mm -hmm. it's i just i'm very yeah. i'm very similar i wouldn't i wouldn't really call myself a writer but i have written a few things um but i find it the way that i work is also a bit of a problem mm. because i'm not getting anywhere yeah because i'm doing that because i have to it's too much perfectionism going on yeah so i'll, I'll write that first scene mm -hmm but I won't move on from it until that first scene is perfect. Yeah, preaching to the choir, honestly. Yeah, I'm, I'm and then I'll go so to... Much. But but then, yeah, then time's ticking on. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I've done one scene, and it's four months later. Yeah. And, yeah, you haven't, but it you haven't got But it does it. happen, because I've listened to other podcasts, mm -hmm. and I've listened to interviews with writers and directors, or it'll be with um, with actors or mm -hmm. producers or composers, and they'll be like, well, you know, it was a bit of a funny shoot because the writer, you know, we was going, we we're supposed to be going on set the week after and he didn't have the thing because he mm -hmm. worked so slow. And, you know, I'm sure that can be frustrating as a producer of this play. I yeah. can see how that would be frustrating. But to me, it has to be, I, it's just the way I work. You said, mm -hmm. how do I write? I don't think there is a set in stone process, but I just everything's always quite concise by the time someone gets to read it mm -hmm. it will never it will never be messy like i just can't do that um you know i always go back and edit if someone you know people have read this script of mine and there's not been any is uh, shot shotgun is that your script no that so is that's, that's matt's script that's, matt's that's, script. that's the other half mm -hmm. of kangaroo call that's his script mm -hmm. um i've uh I, i've dabbled in theater scripts doesn't come as easy to mm -hmm. me um i think of the limitations um and i find it hard to get past that mm -hmm. i've written I, I wrote a little um like a 10 minute comedy theater piece that i quite liked um mm -hmm. and it was called uh it was called lovers anonymous and it was a play on um like uh you know sex addicts when they go right, in okay. at all. and it was um but they're addicted to love and it's mm -hmm. just these men who can't stop falling in love okay. and I thought that was a really funny concept mm -hmm. as in like they go to this sort of like AA meeting but like and it's sort of I, that's the only thing I could imagine on stage and it was the sort of semicircle, and you've got the sort of psychiatrist in the centre and you've yeah. got these dudes either side of him and they're just all talking about the relationships that they've had but like in a funny way and mm -hmm. you've got the the archetypal people you've got the quieter sort of guy who is a bit nerdy and you've got the sort of Jack the lad, but at the heart of it, they're all just like hopeless romantics. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I liked that because the Tarantino in me loves dialogue. Yes. Yeah. I just, I love the idea of quick fire. Like you're sitting mm -hmm. across from that person. It's the, the diner scene from or everything. Reservoir, Pulp Fiction Do Reservoir and, and Dogs. The Reservoir, Dogs yeah, yeah. Reservoir Dogs, that diner scene. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say the diner scene from Pulp Fiction where oh, yes, you've got, yeah, yeah. you know, there's only two of them, but it's like Tim Roth mm -hmm. and Samuel Jackson. And it's just there and it's just constant dialogue. And I love it. I just mm -hmm. love it because I love... It's engaging, isn't it? 100%, yeah. yeah. I um, That's my writing style. I wrote, <laughs> I wrote a book, like I have a book and mm -hmm. um, it should be a script. It's just that I... I started writing as a short film and it mm. just... It, it turned into something else. It turned into like I couldn't mm. finance. <laughs> <It was laughs> and, I, and I guess that's the, yeah. one of the... You talked, you said about the constraints with theatre. 
with theatre, you kind of you're pinned into this box. Yeah. And there's only so much of the world that you can create within that box. Yeah. You might be able to drop some curtains in and things like that, yeah. and change a couple of sets around, which but, is mad. And that's cool. I, yeah. I love that, and I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw a film. It was called like. Um, it was called like Theatre Camp or, or or something or other. It was right. recently really mm -hmm. funny, man. It was about a theatre camp out in out in the states, mm -hmm. and it's a bit of a farce and sort of a maybe a bit satirical. I don't know, but it, it's funny. Um, but there was a line in it, and it was like um, the guy who was like the theatre director was like, "This is the theatre, you know. We make cardboard look like gold." <laughs> okay. And I was like, "That's so cool." Yeah, you know, I write gold mm -hmm. as gold, which is the the screenwriter in me mm -hmm. but that sort of thing of like you know that cardboard box is a, is a treasure chest and you've got to sell it to the audience so that's a treasure chest and mm -hmm. that's amazing that's so cool that's where theatre has its advantages over film because yeah, the sure. audience are like they're a part of it you mm -hmm. know you're sort of you're not telling them that's a treasure chest mm -hmm. or you sorry you are telling them that's a treasure chest but they're not seeing a treasure chest, you know, it's like, what? whereas in film, you can make it literally look like, well, it's just yes, yeah. crazy to me. Our show's so small and the, the it's just three boxes, mm -hmm. as in like uh, one sort of long um, trunk, almost like a cabinet, and then two like bog standard theatre black boxes mm -hmm. and a few props and that's it. And people seem to really like it. And at one point it's supposed to be a hospital waiting room Another point, it's their living room. Another point, it's outside a balcony um, of like a house party. And no one ever has any trouble imagining that it is. It mm -hmm. just is, which is cool. I'm seeing that and being like, how has Matt written that? And how is, mm -hmm. you know, and, but I would still probably, if I wrote something, it would be uh, for the screen because... Yeah. Because that's know. where your your imagination that's is where my imagination your, goes, like you yeah. said about being a, a world builder, creating worlds. Yeah, and that, I think that's that it. is more yeah. the the cinematic style. Yeah, it's it's. Do you, I find I find it interesting as well when the the two genres of I've seen something recently, Back to the Future, the musical. That I enjoyed that. Did I, you? Yeah. Well, I didn't. Did enjoy you not? It. No. Oh, did you I not? When did you see it? it? Uh, only about a month ago. Uh, I, I saw it. Um, Two years ago. So you did, you probably saw the original cast. Cause it, it had only just... I got it from my girlfriend. For, we saw it at Christmas. Like so the apparently Christmas the original cover. cast was better than the okay. current the current cast. Because yeah, yeah, that yeah. can change things up. You know, the yeah, dynamics yeah. of the of the actors. But being a lover of Back to the Future, as I've already said. Yeah. Uh, like my, one of my favourite films, if not the favourite film. And then seeing it being torn apart and redone in a different say, way. What, why did you not like it? Well, I didn't, with it? I didn't like it because... I, for theatre, one, I felt it was too too cinematic. On nothing was being left to the imagination. I get it that. was almost. I, I know what you mean there. It was almost yeah. too much special effects. Even to the, it, it felt like a, a fairground attraction. Yeah. Rather than a play. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know. I know the film Inside Out. So when they're when they're saying lines and delivering them wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, like cring oh, I'm like cringing. That's not like, the way like Doc the, says it. Yeah. yeah, well, I'm like that. That was that was a funny moment in the film, or that was a a moment that that had a bit of heart and yeah. meant something, mm -hmm. and it didn't have that. I get that in, I in do the get play. That. Um, and then just adding a lightsaber in. There yeah, was a lightsaber in. I, the, I think the, I remember the lightsaber. I, yeah, and yeah, I was like, I was like, why, <laughs> why, why, why have you added a lightsaber in? And yeah. the, the, the songs were awful. Like <laughs> they were, they were, like they were bad. I, I just felt like That's Robert, an Robert, night out to not enjoy. It, yeah, though, Rob, like Robert that. Zemeckis. I just felt like he just he's watched his own movie too because he wrote. He he's the one that wrote it. Did he write the musical? Yeah, did he? Yeah, I he didn't put, know that. Um, and. I felt like he's just watched his own movie a few too many times, yeah. got too stoned, and <laughs> like I was just like, yeah, no. I'm a Robert Zemeckis fan. I like Robert yeah. Zemeckis. Um, Castaways. Um, Robert Zemeckis and Bob, Bob something. Wrote the yeah, Back Bob, to the Future musical. Bob, I should know this. We should. Yeah, Maybe it's where you edit it and you say yes. it comes to you and you sort of like, yeah. He'll come back to me. But yeah, they the, the original writers rewrote the, the musical. Yeah. And just yeah, it wasn't for you. No, I feel I feel like they've overconsumed their own content. Did it take you a while to go and see it? Like, did you be like, ah, oh, and then it got to the point where you're like, I should see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was kind been, of like, say, I saw it. I think it was two years ago. It must have been two. I, years I, ago. I saw it when they. I was, I was watch. I was <clears> following like the making of. 
Yeah. So in like yeah, 20, a big deal, wasn't it? Because they were yeah. they were like working on it in 2014, 2015. I didn't know it was. And that long. yeah, they were working on it for a long time, and and I was kind of following that because I was kind of interested. And then then it all got paused for COVID, and then it opened up in Manchester originally. Okay. And I was like, anything that opens in Manchester. <laughs> Is not gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's a bad that's a bad sign. Um but, and then when it came to London I was like, well maybe mm. and then yeah, and then a few people said see it, and then a few people said don't see it. Yeah. And then I was like, the only way I gotta make my own mind up. I gotta watch it. Yeah. So yeah, so I finally got around to it a couple of months ago. And yeah. It's hard that I get I, one if it's just if you just don't like it and you think it's bad, that's enough. Mm-hmm. When you when you hold something so dear, mm-hmm. I mean, just you saying that, like the Anchorman sequel, it was just I was, I didn't want to see it. I was like, no, nah, guys, yeah. like come on, just you, you had the sacred. perfect moment. Like you just yeah. had that, and and I don't think it was the worst film in the mm-hmm. world, but it in if, in comparison to what the first one was for me, and really to be honest, it does, they just redid the jokes, but not so good. Yeah, didn't they? they. I mean it. It broke my heart because I was like, oh, the guy's at the helm of this. It was, mm-hmm. you know, like Adam McKay, Will Ferrell, and then, you know, the ensemble that was the original, plus, mm-hmm. like, some good stars. Mm-hmm. Um, but the writing team and the directing team was the same. But they just fell victim to the sequel. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're, you're better than that. Like, you just, like you said, they hammed up the same jokes. Yeah. Brick become... I mean, Brick was stupid in the first one, but he became like unbearably stupid to it. Mm-hmm. Like, well, he's not even a human anymore. Like, he's just sort <laughs> yeah. of like he's like he's lobotomized. It's mm-hmm. sort of, um, and yeah, just you know, it was like you said, it's the same jokes, but they just ramped up the characters to like three hundred percent. And I was yeah. like, mm, just. I think sometimes when you create something and it's and it's perfect, then you should maybe just leave it alone. Yeah. And and it doesn't weird, have I think to that's the only one that that team has done as a sequel. I think, mm-hmm. don't quote me on that, but mm-hmm. you know, they did like a run of comedies and it was like Step Brothers and Anchorman, and Talladega Nights and the other guys. And um, then they sort of, well, Adam McKay at least went on to do like the big short and more serious sort of things. Right, um, okay. But they never dabbled with the sequel again. Mm-hmm. And I was like, maybe you, it maybe was you sting. learned something. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. we should have. Yeah. Again, it felt like it, they're just doing it for the. For the cash for the grab. check, for the paycheck. Yeah. I think so. It, again, yeah. it was like, you know. And then when they do that, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, mate. No. Yeah, there's no authenticity in it. It's, mm-hmm. yeah. And like I say, super fans or no super fans, usually people can see through it. You know, there'll always be the people that watch it and, you know. Like, I mean, maybe that's me with Back to the Future musical and I was just, or maybe it's a different show, I yeah. don't know. But you, you'll you never get the same If they did Anchorman and the musical. Not a chance. <laughs> exactly. Not exactly. A chance. That, that, and that's how I yeah. felt with Back to the Future musical. Yeah, I, I do get that mm. though. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, but there's a million and one stories that you you can do well, more than a million and one that that doesn't have to be a, a rehash. Oh, I had someone we were sitting on here recently. We was talking about like how so many movies are remakes now or part of like a you know like an IP. Like there's yeah. no, there's nothing there's nothing really original coming. So no. maybe all the original ideas are gone and. I disagree. I think the ideas are there. I couldn't disagree more. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like with, with like what you said, I disagree. Mm. I think there's ideas everywhere. Like, yeah. And I actually think it probably plays into what you said earlier about like the, you know, the, the marketing and the big budget films. And it's like, you're just scared because there's so much money riding mm-hmm. on it. Well, it's, it's, it's so almost like it's a safe to, bet. Yeah. Because you go, you know, people will not go and see some things, but they'd be mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's Ghostbusters turn at the moment, isn't it? It's Ghostbusters mm-hmm. left, right and centre, but yeah. there's already a market there. There's already that fan base. So at the so very when the, least... when the investors are putting the money mm-hmm. the money into the movie, yeah. they can go, well, this is what Ghostbusters 1 and 2 made. Yeah. And Afterlife and whatever. These, this is how much they... Yeah. So we can base what money we're going to give you for this one yeah. based upon what previous history. And that, Whereas if you come is. up with a new idea... If you thought of something brand new, mm-hmm. then where's the where's where do, you go from there? where do you what do you look at as the guarantee to get money back? Yeah, but I mean investment? that's just I think that's just what we were talking about. Like, and it's just that middle ground mm-hmm. kind of falls flat because mm-hmm. of it, at least financially. But the indie films have all the heart, and there's no, yeah, you know, there, there, there's investment there, but it's it's sort of small small time investment, mm-hmm. uh, and it can thrive mm-hmm. because. It, you know, they always go like, oh, you know, we, we got investment from so-and-so and it was maybe a million pound budget 
or less, you know, to meet a million pound budget is still huge. That's, yes, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, for, for films... Yeah, for films, that's still good, quite small. Yeah, mm. but they kind of go, well, you know, this is this is the film, you know, mm-hmm. it's not going to... We're not looking to get 50 million pound in investment back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, creative control if you think you can make a film. But if you've put, I don't know, if you've made Oppenheimer or, or you've made or like a Bond film and it's 300 million pound, mm-hmm. it's kind of... it's got to make that because people are you know like knocking on the door for their for, for their, their investment back, back. so yeah. like you say you kind of go well bonds are law into itself isn't it I'm a, I'm a, mm-hmm. i am a bondy but there will always be a market for it mm-hmm. but if you start a new bond in, and call it something else be like ooh, i think that might actually fall a bit flat <laughs> yeah. sort of um but I, I i've got no interest in rehashing old stories like i say, i like the idea of mm-hmm. thinking I, th- I do feel like there's more freedom in theatre to come up with new ideas. Okay. I do feel like there are... I say that, but then there's a lot of products out there at the moment that are theatre productions that were movies. Yeah. Like Back yeah, to yeah, the yeah. Future and but that's, Heathers. But that's grand. That, that's big scale. The, bi- the big it? scale. Yeah. But on the smaller scale, like all the stuff going up yeah. to, to Edinburgh this year, you know, they're all going to be brand new ideas, aren't they? Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd assume so. Mm. I think... Um, I was thinking the other day about because we've been I've been looking at loads of theatres like mm-hmm. where to put on the show and just sort of you know what's where and what's selling yeah. and and mm-hmm. what's good and what's not so good and I mean the Shakespeare thing blows my mind that it's still so prevalent in theatre mm-hmm. um, and it obviously holds weight and it's good for a reason I know people do um, there's the educational element is what educational thought, element yeah. and like Ian McKellen's doing like like the Player Kings or something mm-hmm. again at the moment or like not again but yes yeah. But it's interesting to me, and maybe you sort of, not could explain, but like, does that get boring? Does the Shakespeare thing get boring for theatre, or is it not? I think the thing with with Shakespeare is that it can be interpreted in so many different ways. Okay. So it's very rare that you'll go and see Hamlet twice. You won't, and in fact, yeah. in fact, you'll never see Hamlet twice in the in same the way. way that it's, it's you'll never see two produ- you'll never see yeah. two productions of Hamlet done in the same way okay every time Hamlet's done it will be a different production yeah uh, everything down to the to the setting to the way that it's performed to the way that's delivered mm. because the language is so poetic mm. and different from the language that we're using today yeah it can be it can be torn apart and remoulded in in so many different ways and varieties. Yeah. That yeah, there's just there's just so much opportunity with Shakespeare to create to create just... something new mm. but with a premise that you know and understand. Do you think there's So you an know and understand of... like Romeo and Juliet for yeah. everyone knows Romeo and Juliet, what the that it's a tragedy, yeah, yeah. but about two young lovers and these rival families. Yeah. But every time it's put on, it can be presented in a completely new, a new way. Interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah no, I get, I, I, get, I get that. I think I was. It was just a. I think it's just a genuine question because I was mm-hmm. like, I see it and I see like amateur productions of, of Shakespeare or or you know yeah. uh, professional productions, but low low budget or like smaller mm-hmm. theaters, and so that blows my mind because it's like I mean. I'll, Clearly, it's four hundred odd years old, but just mm-hmm. in the theatre scene, it's just it's constant. It's like um, I think I think actors enjoy it. As I was well. just about to say to as There's an that, actor, I was like, do you act- think? Because yeah. I I get that. I, I've never wanted to be an actor. Mm-hmm. I I just it doesn't interest me, and I just couldn't do it. But I do understand, like as as a director, I can mm-hmm. understand the thrill of standing there and it's beautiful and it's just what leaves your mouth. Yeah, and there's so much like there's so much to play with. Yeah. There's so much to And play the prestige with. of it, you know. The prestige. Oh, I did yeah. ha- you know, I did ha- I in fact I, I wanted to play Hamlet for a long, long time. Yeah. And I think on reviewing it, if I look back at that time, maybe that was some ego driven idea. Yeah. Um because actually it's not one of the best it is a good oh, what am I saying? It is one of the best parts <laughs> of what I'm saying. But um yeah, I, I would, I, I would love to play Shakespeare because it is just there is just so much to do with it. Yeah, there is so much to be pulled apart, and it it really does define acting. Yeah, m- more than you don't come across many scripts for a film that the stuff the lines that are on the page is exactly what you've got to deliver. Yeah, but with Shakespeare, you can do something 
that's you. You can bring yeah. yourself to it. Okay. Every time. Yeah. You can find it in almost in every word as well. Yeah, I can imagine it is not just the sort of the line. I reckon I can imagine mm-hmm. it's down to the word. And yeah. Just because, because you can like the old. I mean, as so I've seen Shakespeare, and you can get lost in it. Almost, it's it's operatic, right? Mm-hmm. It's sort of like it's, you can get it's so can get, wordy sometimes that you're kind of like, I don't really, I'm not really following like our conversation would now mm-hmm. and be like I know exactly what they mean like it's been explained but it, yeah I suppose it's your job as an actor then to sort of as the tone of that sort of almost almost gobbledygook at times yeah to like sell the story through mm-hmm. a performance so I, I, I get that as an actor why it would be because yeah it's like listening to something in Italian and just being like oh, I know yeah they're hurting or there's oh my god they're in love or oh that, my god there's that's movie, it, yeah, exactly. it's danger and mm-hmm. yeah and there's just there's just so much to learn in Shakespeare for a performer for an actor that you can then take to those more serious roles or yeah. those more modern roles. That That's you can, the education. I mean, literally, the educational bit is that you yeah. learn it in theatre schools and stuff. Yeah. But it, yeah, I, I, it's cool. I, I, yeah. I do get it. It's like I say, I, I, I'm not like, oh my god, they're still doing Shakespeare, but just it blows my mind. Yeah, and it can be, be, and it can be done. It can be some really bad performances out there of Shakespeare as well, sure are, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, because it is tough. It is hard work. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen some awful performances, but it's but it's always different. Yeah. It's always different. And that's how some theatres, like the Globe Theatre in London, manage yeah. it. You know, they're constantly putting it on all year round. And that's Theatre 101 yeah. as well, right? You want it to be fresh. You know, mm-hmm. there needs to be the blueprint of a show, but... Mm. I say you don't really want to see the same show twice, or you don't want to perform the same show twice. There needs to be consistency, I suppose. But like, to be able to be like loose and like say the audience brings a different energy mm-hmm. and and there's the f- there's the freedom with Shakespeare. Yeah, you know, in, it's public in its public domain. Okay, it literally. The freedom, so yeah. yeah, so there's a, you've got you've got the text there, yeah. and you can do as you wish with that. You can edit yeah. that. If you wish, you know, you don't have to, if you're doing Hamlet, you don't have to put on the four hour version. Yeah. You can cut characters out. You can, you can't yeah, add any characters. You can't add it, add any characters in that, that, <laughs> that wouldn't go down too yeah. well. But, um, well, what am I saying? You can do, you can do abridged versions. You can rewrite mm. Shakespeare. Yeah. The BBC done a fantastic series about 20 years ago called uh, Shakespeare Retold. Okay. Where they modernized a lot of the most, most of they modernized at least 20 of them modernized in a sort of like Baz Luhrmann yeah way no 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 like... so no Shakespeare language used at all oh, okay but it was so it was modern language but it was the, the same story it, it was the same story through and through yeah um so some of them I've got it on DVD I should revisit it some of them were some of them were very large performances some of them were quite small performances but yeah. but yeah they'd completely <clears throat> taken Shakespeare and and created their own thing with it yeah i, I mean i, um, I and that's the that's and that, amazing yeah that it's still and going and that you can still adapt yeah. and you can still like it is impressive yeah. um but yeah i think my just the question was just like where do, where do you stand on it like is it yeah. sort of does it still through you and clearly it does yeah it yeah. does yeah and um it was actually a lockdown project of mine studying hamlet yeah uh, like when i was in, in like you just wanted to i just chose that whilst I, I had a goal and a mission that when i came out of um, lockdown yeah. however many years this lasts for because um, I spent pretty much I spent about 18 months at home because my wife was very sick at the time Okay, um, so we we really stayed at home like yeah. a lot and uh, yeah my project was I studied Hamlet and the whole the whole play for ready to direct it and act it Okay, um, I haven't I didn't do it because I got sidetracked with other ideas but you was ready but I was ready and, I, yeah. and it was just uh, it was a fun thing to do to pull it apart and yeah. uh, look at what what characters I want to remove and what lines I want to remove yeah. and how I want bits performed in different areas so did you find did you find lockdown aside from like the, the sort of heavier stuff with your wife being or did mm-hmm. you find it creatively beneficial or more of a hindrance because I found it because beneficial that I had creative things to do. Okay. So I had I had the wants and the needs to do creative mm. things that I could just do in solitary. Yeah. That I could do at home, that I could study. You could just do. Yeah. You know, I'd, I had this idea about doing Hamlet, but now I could really sit down 
because you just had the time. I had the time yeah. to do it and I could work work this out and yeah. there was no other distractions coming at me to stop me yeah for a little period of time so I think yeah I think it was more that I was I was lucky I had the creative thing rather yeah. than I was finding it and yeah more of a distraction than a yes. sort of like solution to it or yes it yeah, yeah. And maybe in turn it was a solution as well. Yeah. To get me to get me through. I, I wished it was. Mm-hmm. And that, I don't know if that sounds weird or not, but I just I was in the other camp where mm-hmm. I sort of had the excitement when I knew that it was gonna drag and be like, right, well get stuff done, mate. Like just go for it. You you wanna write? This is it. And mm-hmm. I just couldn't. And I just no. like not in yeah, a, I, it's really weird. Like, there's a funny thing that I remember um seeing <laughs> and i do believe it and it was like if you're a plumber you know you can't just turn up to work today and be like oh, you know, I, don't, I don't fancy being a plumber today mm-hmm. like i'm just gonna go home i'm not feeling the, the plumbing industry <laughs> you'd be like get back and do yeah, the plumbing mm-hmm. so like i'm not one of those people it's like oh i'm not feeling creative today like just like, but i think that's because it was just almost like it forced upon you and I, if I was paid in lockdown to be a writer I, well, I, I would have written but you would know. you though could you though could you actually if someone forced you because a lot of writers <laughs> have this problem the, the a lot it's do they call it second second book syndrome or something oh yeah like, where you yeah, do a fir- second album yeah syndrome, you do yeah. a first book and that sells really well and yeah. so then the second one they go right well here's a lump sum of money to do the second one and then you can't yeah. produce anything all of a sudden and stuff mm. um I mean, it's it's hypothetical because no yeah. one was doing, no, no, no one, one was paying me to no. write in lockdown or or do anything like that. But I just I couldn't. I just mm-hmm. didn't find anything to write about, and I don't really know why. I don't know if it was the um, you know the underlying anxiety of like the world collapsing, or if mm-hmm. it was just yeah. That was I I, w- I must admit that was difficult and distracting. That I would spend a lot of time on like Twitter and things like mm. far too much time. Yeah. Looking at how bad the world was getting and yeah. watching riots going on and like getting consumed yeah, it's with just not. conspiracy theories mm. and because yeah, I've got an imaginative brain, I would go down rabbit holes. Yeah. Because I'd find things like that very engaging. Yeah. I can so, I can I can sympathise or empathise with that because I was maybe the same, not to a not to a, a, any particular level of unhealthiness Mm -hmm. because i'm not like it now but i went more um closed off than open book in a way i was kind of like um i'll just i I don't know what happened to those months or whatever Mm -hmm. it was the the first one and second one anyway because i was just i didn't do anything and Mm -hmm. i think it's probably quite interesting to think back on retrospectively when you kind of go like mate like you you could have written this, you could have done that, but really it wasn't the right time. No. So you can't beat yourself up too much about that. But no. it's just funny because like people, say, people, would say, people would say, I don't know if they're saying, people would be like, you're a writer. Mm-hmm. You're they'd be like, oh my God, you must be loving it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not loving it, but you're like, you must be it's loving the, this the time. It's the perfect time yeah. to, to do and it. And it was just like, nah, man, mm-hmm. like, I can't, what? I can't think of anything. Like, yeah. Um, I'd love to have done, I'd love to have sort of, come out and be like yeah here is the second book but i don't think there's many people that came out with a <laughs> an yeah. achieved uh, a, you know assignment done i mm. don't think i don't say you know when i talk about oh you know i had a lockdown project yeah no, that that project never came came to anything yeah i just had some i just a painting of a mum and dad shed yeah was, and there was a lot of that going on yeah. wasn't there painting of sheds painting <laughs> of fences and doing some decorating but yeah. but yeah i guess you can just look at it a point in your life that you could be on pause for a minute yeah maybe, maybe that's not that. maybe that's not so, so much of a bad thing it comes out in years to come and you sort of yeah you know hopefully don't do the i'm not keen on writing a covid story i don't care for that but no. there might be something in the the mindset that people went through and then you turn it into another story yeah um that's an interesting thing yeah sort of taking that lockdown sort of the removal of you from life or life from you that's quite an mm-hmm. interesting thing um, so what do you see for the future then? Do you see yourself, you've got these different things that you're doing, the producing, the yeah. writing, the directing. Do you see yourself always kind of being a, a combination of those things or would you like to f- focus on just the writing? Um, in the perfect world, it's a combination of three because mm-hmm. I enjoy elements of all of it. That's the thing. I don't sort of, it's not like I've been forced to 
produce because it wasn't my words this time round. It mm-hmm. wasn't. It really wasn't that. It was more the fact of, oh, th- these aren't my words. Like this is sort of I'm selling someone else's story. I'm mm-hmm. I'm making it work in a, in a different way. Um, and I've in, I've enjoyed that and sort of mm-hmm. being the guy that shakes hands with the theatre manager when you come in and you'd be like, I am Kangaroo Court, the guy you've been emailing, lovely to meet you, so and so. And mm-hmm. that's, I like that. I do like that. But I would never, I. it needs to balance with the other two things um, because I just, I miss writing now. I was saying to Matt um, mm-hmm. that I've just not written anything because it's been so all encompassing. I've just not written anything in so, mm-hmm. so long. And, I'm, and I miss that because... I just do because that's who you are that's who I am mm-hmm. just I want to I've got the notepad with all the internal thoughts that you mm-hmm. scribble on trains and planes and whatever but it's not formulated into anything mm-hmm. so I think there will always be elements of the three mm-hmm. I used to think I wanted to ditch the directing weirdly enough when I first started I was like I'm going to be a writer director then it was like oh just write then it was like okay mm-hmm. well I'm writing maybe I'll produce and whatever but I think I like the idea of directing as well. Just in, you can be different types of directors, right? And oh yeah, it's not one way of I, doing any of this stuff, is it? If I write something, I see it so clearly mm-hmm. that it, it, it's sometimes and sometimes is and would be so hard to hand it over. That's cool. Don't get me mm-hmm. wrong. That that is cool because it's always collaborative and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. But I've got I've, one of my best friends. is a is a writer. He's got pace plays that have been published and mm. yeah, so yeah he's a successful writer yeah. um with theater productions but he does yeah he finds it very hard to to let go and give to someone else yeah finds it very I, hard I, to, I say I'm, i could be like i am like that mm-hmm. my because he knows exactly what the idea was the intention and the the vision yeah that was his idea intention and vision yeah and you want to see um, it through to the end whatever mm-hmm. it is it, see it sort of However, now he says he goes to see one of his one of his plays gets put on about three or four times a year, That's and he'll cool. often he'll often go and try if it's in the country, he'll go often go and try and see it. Yeah, um, that yeah. would be amazing. Wouldn't it? I think he went to Spain a couple of years ago. They were putting it, they on, put it on there. Yeah, and he was yeah. just like, "Oh, go go, I'll go and see how it's see how it's doing. Yeah. See what they've done with my my work." Yeah, I, I mean that you know? interests me. Like I say, I, I'm not. I could, I could write and give stuff away mm-hmm. if it wasn't so close to home. Mm-hmm. Like as in, so my screenplay is my story. It's it's mine to tell. It literally is me. Mm-hmm. Um, that one would be hard to sort of, if anyone showed interest in it, that that would be hard. Don't get me wrong. If you know, mm-hmm. you can make it work. Don't get me wrong. If if the only option was you know, Universe will come knocking or you know whatever it is, Tarantino comes knocking <laughs> and, and he says, to. "I want a director to be like, yeah. you've got to be a big man <laughs> yeah, to go to like turn. no, um, <laughs> yeah." But it would make it wouldn't be any less hard. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong; it would still be like you know you could have Christopher Nolan doing your mm. script, and you'd be like, "That's just, just not the way I saw it." Yeah. <laughs> it would be oh, it's cool, but because uh, um, it is your cre- it has come from you. It is your creation. Yeah, my um, and so when someone else starts to play with that, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it was playing with it, isn't yeah. it? It's literally playing with your mm. ideas and and whatever you write, even if you write something that's about. Even if you write Ghostbusters or whatever, like I'm sure Dan Aykroyd, there was there's elements of Dan Aykroyd in that. Um, yeah. In fact, I know there's elements of Dan Aykroyd in that because he was like mm-hmm. his family were like mad into sort of like the occult and stuff. So right. it's just it, it, you, there's always you in that. So it would be hard to to give it to away. To give it away, mm-hmm. yeah. My like the book I wrote, genuinely, the book I wrote is, is like nothing to do with my life, but characters in it and mm-hmm. lines that are said are from my life or versions of it Mm -hmm. and that is something i would love to turn into a screenplay so i guess i guess if you ever do pass it on to someone else anything that you've wrote that you it comes with some some rules some guarantees maybe it does you know jk rowling when they did harry potter she had she set out her guidelines that if they're going to make this it has to be a british cast yeah that was one of her rules because she knew that it wouldn't work if they started getting loads of American actors in it. Yeah. It wouldn't be the thing that she created. I think you're probably right there, mm-hmm. and it's not unheard of. You, I think sometimes you think, like I say, thinking big, Harry mm-hmm. Potter level big, you think that there is going to be this big Hollywood producer that, you know, 
raps on the door and goes, mm-hmm. yeah, we love your script. We want to buy it. We want to option it for whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you. Here's your check. You are nothing to do with it. That I, I that plays in my head. And don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. you'd like, everyone would love to be like, well, I've got a million dollars. What? But there is that thing of being like, oh, but then it's not gone. It's 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 not mine anymore. It's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that I don't think it's as closed off as. I think it is. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think there is that producer that says absolutely not. I think there are ways where you negotiate, like you say, well, you know, I, I, I guess, it, of, I guess yeah. it depends on where it comes from. Yeah. So if you're if you're asked to write something, you're asked to write a film, then yeah, then you're kind of asked at the beginning to give it away. Yeah. Whereas if you wrote, say, a book, and then someone comes to you to want to tra- turn that into a film, there's more. There's more power, leeway. Yeah, yeah. because obviously they like it if they've come to you yeah um so yeah so at that point is the point where you you start to negotiate what's what's got to be what's got to stay in your control yeah i think to keep it as your your thing i think to sort of throw opportunities away like Mm -hmm. that for the sake of pride is juvenile as well so you have to yeah you know to think you got to think bigger Mm -hmm. you know this this project is smaller or this project isn't what I saw it as, but it's the stepping stone to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Um, That's huge. You sort of kind of go like pride can get in the way a lot. Yeah. Um, And I'm, I'm, I'm having that with my, my daughter actually at the moment. I talked about my son briefly. Yeah. Got a daughter as well. She's a musician and she's in a band and they keep asking her to play covers. Yeah. But she won't do it. But I've been saying to her recently, but if you do do the covers, yeah. That's what's going to get people interested in you yeah. and understanding and seeing you for, yeah. for who you are so that they will listen to your original material. 100%, mate. It's when so you see... In all of these creative fields, we do have to have a little bit of give and take, don't we? Yeah. yeah. It oh. can't just be, this is the way that I am. Mm-hmm. This is what I do. It's almost like putting a wall up, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, and, and you want... <laughs> you need to be... You need to be likable you need to be yes. accessible you need mm-hmm. to because no one wants to work with you otherwise mm-hmm. you close yourself off like that sort of like every man every woman's an island or whatever it mm-hmm. is then it's like cool we'll be on your island i don't like there's a million and one other people who we can work with yes, <laughs> yeah. it's um like that that's the pride thing you sort mm-hmm. of you sometimes maybe people learn the hard way or whatever but yeah i just I, I, that, it's that authenticity again it's yeah. just kind of like if you really believe in it that much and you you know you're talking to this big exec and he can see in your eyes how much you believe in that project unless he is completely heartless i'm sure there would be some way of Finding, that communication yeah. and stuff yeah, yeah. i think so i like to think so anyway mm-hmm. but. so what advice would you give to any aspiring writers out there what would you say to them to to get them started on their writing path uh To get him starting on the writing path, um, pick a story that you know. You know, like, I think the last thing I remember writing that I, well, not the last thing I remember writing that I really liked, but the, literally the last thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was it was a real, sh- I mean, the shortest of short stories, flash fiction, flash fiction. Mm-hmm. And um, it come from university and it was a prompt and the lecturer was like, the prompt is, what scares you the most? And obviously that's so open to mm-hmm. like interpretation, but mine wasn't any sort of like um, great sort of metaphor in terms of being scared of, you know, some sort of like failure or whatever. It was literally a face in my windscreen, <laughs> in my windscreen. Like, and that goes back to when I worked at Tesco's mm-hmm. as a 16 year old. And I used to drive back in the country roads and I used to sort of look in the rear view mirror um, to just, I mean, you do, don't you? When you drive sometimes yeah, you yeah. just, and I just was always like, I'm going to look once and there's going to be a face. And it's, I mean, mate, I get it, the, yeah, the yeah, hairs yeah. are up now. It's, yeah, yeah. That's terrifying. So as soon as I got that prompt, it was, that's what scares me. And mm-hmm. I built a very short piece of flash fiction about, um, a dude who sees a face in the rearview mirror, and it it got published. It was cool. It, it went to like this thing called um, L- the Literary Hatchet. I got a little bit of money, nothing to sort of like 
cool mum about, but you know, still nice. You're a paid writer. It's cool. Um, but I knew that story, you know, as in like, I, I, I didn't, it wasn't like, um, the prompt is what scares you. I didn't sit there and go, Oh, okay. I could, I could take this somewhere where it's going to blow the reader's mind. It's yeah. going to be like, I am scared of failure. Mm-hmm. I'm scared of, it's heavy, but I'm, like, I'm scared <laughs> of dying alone. I'm scared of what's to come. It was just like, nah, man, a face, a in face the, in the mirror, in the mirror. Is enough. And I think <laughs> that's the word of the day. And it? it's authenticity. It's mm-hmm. if you're going to write, not like write what you know, as in like today I had cornflakes and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's, you know, what scares you, what excites you, who do you love? What do you love? Mm-hmm. Craft your story around that. And it will be, you know, it might not sell, it might not get published. It might not make the big screen, but you, I mean, you can read back through it on the fourth draft and be mm-hmm. like, I can't, I can't change it. That's it. That's what I've got. And I just, I love that. I love when I write something that's me and like, I, I think the more, most authentic stuff sells, mm-hmm. but even if it don't, I, I, you can sort of, you can put your head on the pillow and go, well, that's it. That's what I got. <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, it's yeah. the best I got. So yeah, in terms of advice, it might not be the best advice, but like, do it. Sounds, it sounds pretty good. <laughs> it yeah, sounds no, but it, it sounds pretty uh, authentic, and it sounds pretty um, a pretty good place to start as well. Yeah, I've got um, this is just this has just come to me. So my uh, my nephew, he's um, he's in the last year of primary school. So how old, how old is that? Like 10, 10, 11, 10, 10 11. 11. Yeah. And he loves writing. Okay. So he writes purely from his imagination. Now, my sister yeah. is a little bit concerned sometimes about because okay. he's very imaginative. Yeah. Um, Isn't that a funny concept? Like, yeah. yeah. What, to be doing... To, no, to be like... Wor- like, I mean, I get I, it. I, 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 know, I know where you're be, coming from. Yeah, I, I think... I think um, I, I maybe maybe worries the wrong worries probably no, the wrong I, I word. Know, but like, I know where you're going with it. But yeah. like in terms of it's it's funny because you'd love to just I'd love to sit and write pure imagination. Yes, yeah. and that is what he's doing. He's writing pure pure imagination. And every time I go around there, he's got a notepad and pen. Yeah, and these ideas are are, are coming coming out. Have you got any advice for him for for continuing doing that? Um, as he moves forward to keep writing. As all the other don't distractions lose, start um, to happen, don't lose heart in it. My, um, it's funny. I had a little flashback when you were saying that my um, my mum and my nan, I mean, my whole family special to me. My mum mm. and nan are special. And when I when I was little, I used to write a lot, and um, I lost heart because I got distracted by mm-hmm. being a being a being a teenager or yeah. you know doing. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't wasn't anything bad but mm-hmm. it's sort of um life life gets in the way life it's not it's mm-hmm. not the coolest thing to write when you're no. you know it's not the it's not the most horrendous thing but mm-hmm. it's not the cool thing to do and you know get lost in the imagination and stuff and mm-hmm. maybe it harks back to what i was saying about my best friend who has nothing knowing or had no interest in dungeons and dragons and yeah maybe there's that barrier because he was just like oh i can't be a geek and then you turn th- with 31 you turn 32 30 and go what does it matter being a like, geek i just <laughs> want to play dungeons yeah. and dragons and, mm-hmm. and then that's your best self and he was like oh man like we was creating this story as it was going along and mm-hmm. and as he was saying it, i was like oh, i was like being a kid again it was mm-hmm. literally like playing dress up and or like scribbling fantasy stories but yeah to to him i would yeah i just say just I oh, do it like really if it it's such a cliche in it but if it makes you happy like forget everything else like it's just you gotta mm. do it like I I I used to write all the time and I used to, my, if you ever met my mum <laughs> which you maybe in in the future mm, who knows you, you know, might do but <laughs> it's unlikely mm-hmm. but she would tell you that I used to sit well she'll and come write. and see it when we do this live she'll come, right? of course she will yeah she'll be there yeah and um she would her and my nan would be like um and i didn't know this as a kid because mm. who knows but like i, I was like 11, probably primary school maybe the same age like 10 mm. 11 so you remember but you're not switched on to be like this means something and they would just be like like you know really sort of like like tell me more tell me more sort of thing mm. not in the greece musical <laughs> but like yeah, yeah. literally come on like what no this mm. is this is thing and they still like it now when i showed them that short story about the dude in the, the rearview mirror it was mm. That was a, a thing they said. They were like, ever since you were a little boy, you just, you had us there. Like you just, 
And I really do think people have a, a, a thing that people have lots of stuff. They might be a decent producer, a decent director, but mm-hmm. the writer is them. Yeah, sure. I think that's me. I don't. Mm-hmm. It's like you know, you might be able to be. You might you might play football good. You might play squash, but oh my god, like doing the high jump is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I think there's just that thing someone that has someone there. has, mm-hmm. and um, and I, I think it's good to. What is it? They they say something that don't they? That you got a you got to find your gift, and then you got to give it away. Yeah, it's just, and if what, writing is your gift, mm. then you need to let others see that. Yeah, you need and to I share just, that. I feel most comfortable when it's there. So mm-hmm. if you're, so it's your nephew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if your nephew, I mean, clearly he's comfortable doing it. Like, mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing. It's it's the opposite. It's a good thing. And just always remember that it's your, it's your comfy place. Yeah. Again, it's that all, authenticity. It's like, you know, I don't know if someone tells him you should do something different because it gets, well, I mean, there's so much bad in the world like writing stories is really mm. up there with the good yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just gotta keep going and not expect to not expect to make your living from it i don't think mm-hmm. but work at it as if it is because it's only gonna be heartbreak when you don't sell your book or mm-hmm. you don't sell your script but you have to write as if you are gonna sell it because it means that much to you yes yeah, yeah. um i think so anyway mm-hmm. yeah that's you right. mentioned your family there, so I was going to wrap this up when we're talking about the future and yeah. advice. But yeah, I, I hadn't said thank you to your brother for introducing <laughs> us. Yeah, yeah. he's that my was... biggest fan, mate. He's yeah, my, yeah, Bill. He's um, he is. He's my he's my best mate. Mm-hmm. Like you sort of. I always thought it was strange when people didn't get on with siblings mm-hmm. because obviously until. Well, I mean, now we're obviously really close, but like until... Older brother? Or? Older brother, three mm-hmm. years older, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that shines. It's just the natural protection thing mm-hmm. still to this day. Um, just wants to be the big brother and nice. wants to... And we're very, sim- we're very different, but we're very similar. And mm-hmm. I think we care about each other as much as the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I know we do. But he um, he's just the most supportive man in the world. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, and you 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 can't buy that. <laughs> you no, can't. You can't. You know, and luckily, no. and I was saying about like, I'd never and to get you know to to this, this, this what happened was that I I got a phone call from your brother. Yeah. To yeah to he he he'd seen a friend of a friend. Yeah. On the Mike podcast was on the Mike. podcast. Yeah. Um, and he was like, yeah, this this could be quite good for for my brother. You're interested in having a chat, and I was like. That's just the nicest thing a brother can do. It's yeah, just like it's, trying um, to put, trying to trying to make some connections happen, and he was just clearly looking out for you, like yeah, in a Self, good, it's positive selfless, way. Mate, is what yeah. it is. It's completely selfless, yeah. and it's and that's it, how I hope my children would be with each other. Yeah, that's know? what I mean about. It. I never understood how siblings mm-hmm. couldn't get on. Seriously, as you get older, you kind of yes, go, oh, yeah. you know, people are individuals and whatever. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I mean, some of my best friends, like, no, they don't hate their siblings, mm-hmm. but they would they would never sort of think to call them a best friend or they would never think to just go for a beer with them or like a chore would be going around theirs for dinner but I mean, Bill is he's, he's my best friend like it's just I just think what does that mean to you everything mate mm. like it's so nice I mean like you just said him phoning unprompted like completely yeah. unprompted not even I mean I, I never even mentioned any, you know, like, because it wouldn't be like, oh, wouldn't it be, Bill, wouldn't it be great if I was on a podcast one day yeah, three so, years yeah. ago and he, meant, and he remembered and it? He, it wasn't, it's just the fact that he listened he's, to... He's gone, that would be good for creative. my brother. Joe's creative. Yeah. Oh, my so. God, this is a match made mm-hmm. in it. You know, and just because he wanted to get me to do it, like, I just... I think support networks are huge. Mm-hmm. And the, the more projects I do... I see it more and more and it's a sad thing that not everyone has a support network. I get that. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that's the sadness because Mm -hmm. I have, and I never take it for granted, like ever, um, to be able to have call up umpteen amount of people and Mm -hmm. and explain what's gone wrong or what's gone right. Excuse me. Or them just turn up to see the show or them read the story or whatever it is. It's, um, it's just, it's almost bigger than the thing itself Mm. because, Oh, I wouldn't have done the done it. I was going to say half the things. I wouldn't have done any of the things no. without the the people that I had behind me. No, what I was saying about my parents being yeah. like, I guess it, I guess it starts with them. Yeah, and it starts just with the going, parents. You know, and I I get why it, 
mm-hmm. your, your kid going into a creative industry would be scary. I'm still unsettled now. You know, mm-hmm. you're still unsettled. You know, you'll always yeah, yeah, be yeah. unsettled. Until well, there was a point where <laughs> I said, I I do not want my children going into the creative industry. Yeah, I would. It was the last thing that I would want for my kids. Mm. Whereas as they're getting older and I'm getting older, I'm like, well, no. If that is what they want, then that's the same yeah. thing I want there. But yeah, because you know how unsettling <laughs> yeah, it, can, you, it can be. Yeah, I mean, my my mum and dad don't firsthand because they, they've not done mm-hmm. the creative thing um or not like any sort of pursuing of it and um they were just like yeah they'd like my dad's a cabbie my mom's mm-hmm. a travel agent you know he's just the nicest people on planet earth but they were like you know this boy loves that and he's got to give it a go and i'm still i'm 32 and i'm still giving it a go yeah <laughs> and well, I'm, I'm 40 this year and i'm still giving it a go yeah and i'll never <laughs> stop know. mate i'll never stop no. and i'm sure you'll never stop it all mm. it it adapts. Yes, yeah. You've had, I've not had kids, but you've had kids and you kind of go, yeah. well, I mean, like I say, if you compare us, like I'm still mm-hmm. more able to probably try things that you wouldn't because of your family. Yeah. But then if I have a family. I do, I do now, now that they're, they're older, I am back to, yeah. like I said, I had that period in the bank yeah because of because you have, to, I did it, I did it for them. Isn't that cool that you, that you went back to, I think that's mm-hmm. so cool. It's not like, because it shows where your heart is mm-hmm. because you, Oh, I knew every moment of the day that I was there, I was in the wrong place. So yeah. That, you know, not just being in a bank, I was not doing the thing that, that I'm meant like to be doing. That's like caged animal type yeah, thing. It's literally yeah. how I felt, yeah. Yeah, but no, the, the my brother Bill, mum and dad and and friends, mate, mm-hmm. as well, like sort of yeah, very, invo- very important. And you said about like being an actor can be quite isolating mm-hmm. and... You know, being a creative, being a writer can be so isolating. I've yeah. never felt it personally because I've mm-hmm. not let myself get that isolated. But you could, if you wanted to, you could shut the world out and get lost in your laptop mm-hmm. and and sort of turn everyone else away because you're trying to chase an impossible dream. Yeah. But keeping people around is is, is as important, if not more important, to me. It's sort mm-hmm. of like, yeah, because the end of the day you're just trying you're trying to do something to to either i don't know to get you to get you through life to get you paid to get you Mm -hmm. to have fun to to fill your time and that's only one facet of it it's a massive part Mm -hmm. i love it but you know i still need to i still need to see friends i still need to mm -hmm. see family i still need to otherwise you know it's just part of just having them yeah just having them have your back and the support and if it's yeah. just a kind word here or there it, it can mean so much can't yeah. it oh yeah 100 percent. you know yeah. i had yeah. i had a, a an old friend on here recently and she literally said to me she sent me a text hadn't mm-hmm. spoken to her in about six years yeah got a text that just said well done was and that's this all um, i needed was this the lady who did the princess parties yes yeah, yeah i listened great. to that one yeah. so yeah that was that was that was, a, that, and you, that did was the spy, you did the spider-man thing i was spider-man <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was listening yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's all you need from your community, from your people around you. Sometimes it's just a, a well done. A well that's done. That's really lovely, and that that's and that nice. can that can do so much for you. Yeah, you know, or a little. It's okay. You got this. I had that. Re- I had that this weekend because of the show. A friend come to see it, and he just he just messaged. Um, I'm so proud of you, mate. And how nice is that? You know, it's like yeah, yeah. you know, it's like tearjerker, isn't it? Yeah, kind yeah. of like oh, it's yeah. Would you say back to those people? Um, I'm bad with that. <laughs> I'm, bad, I'm, I'm bad. Not like as in in a sort of horrible way, but you know, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll turn it into a joke usually. That's um, fine. <laughs> yeah, I was sort of you know I don't know I I literally cannot remember what I said to him. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say now to those people that support you? Those people that say well done, proud of you. Um, that you probably will never know how much it truly means. I think. No, what am I talking about? I know. I like. I really do. I no, sort of, they will never know. They will never know. They will never know. They will never know. I, I, I would love for them to. I think they do. I think they do in that alone. I would like to think so. I, I would love <laughs> to think so, mate. But I could just, yeah. My, my girlfriend, I've been with my girlfriend for nearly 10 years. And the mm. same thing. I just sort of, she's such a good person. Clearly, you wouldn't be with someone if they was bad for 10 years. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, and you just kind of think like, oh, I hope, I hope that somewhere in the back of their head they realise, because I, they obviously know how much 
I mean to them. Mm-hmm. But you kind of go, it's just reciprocated. And it's just, it's when things are rubbish, it's what gets you through. It really mm-hmm. is. It's it's like the, yeah, it's the, the, the little moment, the little message, the, the phone call to you that mm-hmm. goes, yeah, it's the, just a nice, <laughs> it's too nice. It's, yeah. 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 You can never say thank you enough, can you, to those things? No. Yeah. It's been a, like, I feel like this is a lovely place to wrap this up. Probably. Yeah. yeah. A really nice place. It's been really lovely chatting to you, Joseph. Yeah, you too, Martin. I really it's appreciate it. so nice. Um, and I think we're going to do this again live in Edinburgh. I would love to. I would absolutely love <laughs> we're gonna, to. We're going to somehow make make that happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I, I'm going to try and come see your show. Um, yeah. We're just in, mention um, on here how, how we get to, to see your show. Um. So we we it's Kangaroo Court. It's mm-hmm. um, I'd say most things are probably even though I'm not a big Instagram guy, most things through that are Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rue Court, and um, there's like a you know like the link tree thing where you get tickets and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. The next sort of um, we're sort of shifting shows around at the moment, but um, the next confirmed definite ones are in mm-hmm. June in South London, um, a place called the Jack Studio Theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, and then probably one in Cornwall. I mean, if you happen to be in Cornwall, it'd be great. But you know, and the chances are most people aren't going to be. And, and what's then the space in Edinburgh? What's the space? The space is. I mean, the space well, the is called the space. Oh, it's called it, the space. The, right. the, the cut or the company is called right. the space. They've okay. got, I think it's something like forty odd venues, and we're mm-hmm. in. It's called the Haldane Theatre at Surgeons Hall. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those sort of like you know there's the courtyard where there's the the bar in the middle and the theatres are off of that okay. um, and we're on every night apart from the 11th of August basically that's our day off right. that's when I'll sleep okay <laughs> that's when I'll but sleep but you're there for the entirety of the fringe we're doing, apart from that day I mean I, I don't know the literally it's, the free, st- it's three weeks I think yeah so we, our tech I know our tech is on the mm-hmm. 1st of August our first show's on the 2nd of August. Yeah, I believe that's the our, start. Uh, so we're on, we start on the 2nd, mm-hmm. our last show's on the 25th. Right. So it is... You're there the, for the core, the at least. Whole, and mm. I say the 11th is our day off. So, wow. um, yeah, there are 23 opportunities to see well, us. Well, I'll definitely be seeing you at the Fringe, yeah. for sure. No, I'd love to see you there, mate. Brilliant. I'd love to see you there <laughs> and love to see you there. Be, yeah. <laughs> Doing it live, yeah. yeah. Thanks again. No, thank uh, oh, you. and thank you if anyone has been watching or listening. Yeah, Always obviously. like to add, yeah. you're appreciated. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you want to find out more about the BTS Creative Academy, do you know what you need to do? What I need to do? Or what anyone needs to Are do if they want to find out more. Follow BTS Creative Academy. I mean, yeah. I do it on Instagram. And, yeah, it's um, on that's Twitter. In fact, I'm not a TikTok guy. You do TikTok no. stuff. I do. Though, it. I'm, I'm yeah. on all of it, so no one can, yeah. can miss it. And there's the website. I'm going through the website. Yes, and, yeah. um, the website's still building. That was a, yeah, but I like an initial that you've got idea. All the people like there's like the quotes of people that have mm-hmm. been on there as well. And yeah, it's sort yeah. of because like you said, it's not you're not just pushing you. You're you're like you're promoting everyone that's been on the show. Oh yeah. I like, f- well, I, I feel like this this is where this has transformed into. Yeah. It's not. It's not. This is not not about me. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You're the guest. This is. Yeah. This is why I named the episodes. Put your name on it because yeah. it's about you. It's about Joseph Cobb. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. No but worries. Yeah, no, honestly, I. I love the. I love what you're doing. Brilliant. I mean, I Thank hope you. that comes across because I have listened and yeah. whatnot. But it's it's cool because it's just it's for people like me. And how can you not? How can you not like something about what you want to be a part of? Yeah. Like it's like I say, it's the community thing. And it's, it's important. Thanks again, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you.